Good morning, one and all. Happy Monday to each and every one of you. Hope you had a restful but amazing weekend. I sure did. Uh, quick updates. No broadcast tomorrow. Tomorrow I have appointments all day that are going to keep me away from the computer. So sadly won't be able to do a broadcast tomorrow. But we should be on schedule for Wednesday and the rest of the week. Also working really hard on a Laura video that I started over the weekend. No promises, but I think I'll be able to get it done by the weekend. Uh, this coming weekend. That's the goal. Good to see everybody on YouTube today. Tony J Ant 444 Richard uh, Alt Grendel Naka Michael Ms. Korg. Uh, Cordelia Chesterfield, Laura Elstad, Alt Grendel, and it's Jonathan Hughes with the first super chat of the day. What do you call a retired rapper, a hip pop star? What do you call a retired rapper? Pop, pop, because old, pop, like pops, old, retired. Oh. Jonathan, I got it. Thank you. That's Jonathan's first super chat ever. And that's what he chose. That's a, that's amazing. I love it, Jonathan. Thank you so much. And I got it. There you go. All right. Yes, yes. Okay, let's pop up the chat here on Facebook. Uh, good to see Ruby, Anthony, Toby, Noble, Alicia, Wolf, Steven. So great to see each and every one of you today. Hope you've been enjoying the shorts uh, our editor has just been amazing, working overtime, just knocking these shorts out. Every single one is a banger. Loving it. Thank you so much. And then Hunter in the chat says, scariest president had to be Rushmore. <sighs> I can already tell that I'm going to have problems with this joke. But anyway, the scariest president must have been Rushmore. He had four heads. Good thing we trapped him in a mountain. Even if we have to live in fear of the spell wearing off, it just keeps going. This is a lot wrong with this joke. But thank you very much, Hunter, for that. Good old President Rushmore. Who can forget? Uh, <clears throat> amazing. Well, uh, update on Admiral. He is back to his old self, and I am thrilled. Uh, I had been waiting for his his adorable, cute little personality to come back, and it took a couple of days. It really did, you know. And I, it was a major surgery. They sliced open his abdomen. They had to rearrange his guts, untwist some pipes, and all of that. And then they had to staple his stomach into the you know body wall of his chest to prevent this from happening again. Then they sewed him back up. I mean, it was a major, major thing, and. He was out of it for several days, but we've got him on pain meds. Well, we had him on pain meds, but he just finished all his pain meds. Um, Anti-bacterials um, and all of that. And he's back to his old self. He's smiling and wagging his tail and eating his food like a pro. So I think we are through the woods with Admiral and I am absolutely thrilled to have him back to normal. And I'm grateful for all of your support during what was really frustrating and, uh, well, scary time. But uh, he's doing really, really well. And it's been really fun seeing the other animals interacting with him because you can tell that they knew something was wrong, but they didn't know what. Like my, my cat Chowder, uh, when, when we brought Admiral home, Chowder just went up and sniffed him a little bit and then went to his belly and sniffed his belly and Admiral was just lying there exhausted. And Chowder curled up next to him and f fell asleep. And then our little puppy, Grits, um, we, ke we kept them separate for several days because Grits is still a puppy and wants to play. And he wants to play rough. And Admiral's not in the place where he can play rough, right? He's still recovering. But after a few days, we decided to let them spend a little more time together. And, you know, after seeing Admiral for the first time in, you know, half a week, uh, Grits went up and just, you know, sniffed his face and then just started licking his face. And I've never seen Grits do that before. He just licked Admiral's face. So it was cute seeing the animals respond to Admiral, and it's great having him back in top form. Now, when we left off uh, last week, we had just completed Sam's story. We then went and did side quests for a little while. 
to, um, well, just to get get some of the side quests completed. And we finished a really interesting one uh, about the list, which uh, I, I think I might do a lore video about because it was really uh, fascinating. If there's a random encounter that completes that story that we uh, went through on Friday that I don't know about, let me know about that so I can know to capture that footage if I plan to do a lore video about that. But, um... Next step, it's the Crimson Fleet. Did I say Crimson Caravan last last week? I think I might have said Crimson Caravan, but it's the Crimson Fleet. It's uh, one of the major quest lines that we still have active, and we need to improve Andresia's affinity, and I'm thinking the Crimson Fleet is going to give us a great opportunity to do that. So I think we're going to try and tackle the Crimson Fleet. Now, I don't really know much about the quest line, but I think we're not joining the Crimson Fleet. We're pretending to join. I think we're going undercover for the United Colonies as like a secret agent. I don't really know, but that's kind of the vibe I got. But let's dive in and do some inventory management and explore a little bit. I think that today's going to be a, a good long live stream, a good standard sized broadcast. It's going to be a lot of fun. Sam Abbott on uh, YouTube says, "How hi, how are you so awesome? You know, this is one of these uh, undefinable things that, I mean, people say it's the beard. People say it's the hat that I sometimes wear. Uh, I mean, it could be the constant uh, drinking of coffee just and rum and, and scotch all combined into this cocktail of wonder in my stomach. I don't know. It's really, it's one of those undefinable things. Um, but the reality, the, the reality is undeniable, isn't it? <clears throat> I'm glad you're saying it and not just me. Julian Z says, good morning, Ox. So good to see you on this Stormfield Monday. Hope you're well. So glad to hear Admiral is back to normal and that Gritz is reunited with his buddy. Yes, I'm, I'm really excited that he's back to normal and I'm, it's so great seeing them because whenever they're together they rough house and sometimes it gets a little tense right they'll be making growling noises and you're like are they playing are they are they still playing or or are they being is 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 grits being a bit too much now i don't know but uh seeing grits come up with all of that concern and just put all of that love and affection towards admiral was really nice to see cody reagan became a bronze ox thank you so much Cody Reagan. I appreciate it. And then Halfway Nuts says, I shot a fleeing Crimson Fleet pirate square in the butt. He tried to crawl away after that. Does that make me a bad person? No, because you shot him square in the butt. Had you shot him triangle in the butt or round in the butt, that would have been a war crime. But square in the butt? perfectly legitimate. He is Crimson Fleet after all. I mean, they're just going to surrender when they're losing so they can lick their wounds and come back to murder you some more. So there's no reasoning with the Crimson Fleet. There is no mercy for the Crimson Fleet. Present 99 uh, gifted 10 Oxhorn memberships to the community. Thank you so much, Present 99, and congratulations to Walker76, Bubba T. Mopar, Stefano Nofke, Ryan Spencer, John Washburn, Brian M. I'm sorry, Brian W. Wow, am I dyslexic or something? Brian W., Jonathan Hughes, Ah Nobody, Tim DeAnda, and Chad Harger. Thank you so much, Present99, and congratulations to everyone who snagged a free Oxhorn membership. Okay, are you ready? Are we gonna do some Crimson Fleet? Let's do it. We got him a hard save on the Star Eagle. Too Tall 2009 says, Hi Oxhorn, if you want to get into the Halloween spirit, go to the Schrodinger star system, then travel to the planet Schrodinger 3, a ship called the Kalander. Dock and explore, if you dare. That sounds really interesting. I might have done that had I not just amped up the entire Crimson Fleet thing. Tell you what, I hope you, you show up to my future broadcasts 
Remind me after we complete the Crimson Fleet, and I'd like to make that a priority. Thank you so much. Uh, Aileen G became a gold ox. Thank you, Aileen. And Altair uh, says, don't turn to the dark side. Down with the pirates. Don't worry. I will not become a pirate. I mean, I might do questionable things to explore the lore, but I'll always load a hard save after, you know, so that that taint is not upon my character because we don't want our characters tainted in any way. Right, so let's take a look at our quest log. Also, uh, some comments I saw on my last broadcast were saying that um, uh, my quest here updated the location of the ECS constant, but it didn't. What happens is once you complete a quest, the quest log will update and tag the most recent quest that you tagged. So I had done a completely different quest about the list guys, but before I started that quest, I tagged the location of the ECS constant so that when I finished the list quest, it re-tagged this one. So if we were to go show on the map again, it's gonna again put us in orbit around Porima 2, which we already know is the wrong location. The constant is not in orbit around Porima 2. That's the glitch. So we're waiting on Bethesda to fix this glitch before we can complete the quest, or I'm just gonna have to load a previous save and perhaps make different choices and hope that the ship shows up somewhere else. I think what happened, this is just a hunch, but I think what happened is that I shouldn't have access, accepted the side quests from Abe and Lydia after completing the primary quest. I think we should have completed the primary uh, quest about the ECS constant, waited for it to grab jump away and change positions, then find it again, and then start Abe's quest and Lydia's quest. But we didn't. Because we didn't have to. We went back to the ECS constant, and we talked to Abe and Lydia again, and then they gave us their quest. But what I think happened is we got those side quests, which created a quest marker in orbit around Parima 2. But then the ship moved, which I think really messed things up. So we're waiting on Bethesda to fix that glitch. And um, in the meantime, we're going to work on a bunch of other stuff. Julian Z says, Ox, have you begun your Halloween plan? It's spooky season. That's true. I have not begun my Halloween plans yet. Um, my kids have been pestering me to decorate. I, dec I went overboard last year. I decorated the house up for Halloween. We had a lot of fun. And now they want me to do it again, and right now I'm kind of low on energy. There's been a lot going on, and I'm like, uh, just busy. So, uh, but yeah, I need to decorate, and I don't know if I'm going to do anything for the show for Halloween. Last year, the only reason I did anything special was because it was episode 666. Uh, and it's not even episode 777 yet, so. <laughs> I don't have anything special planned for the show, for Halloween. President 99 says, I hope the quest works for you when I tried it. It went so bad, the entire United Colonies hated me, including the Crimson Fleet. Oh dear. Well, I am now officially nervous. Great. All right, I'll do my back. Okay, where were we? Deep cover. Commander Tuwala of the United Colonies Vanguard has provided me with an assignment. I am to report to the UC Vigilance and speak to Commander Kibwe Ikande for the details. Proceed to UC Vigilance. All right. Uh, oh, do I have any contraband? Uh, I, I always got to check now. How did I get on? Yes, I do. Harvested organs. Oh, my God. How did I get so much crap? How do I have all of these things? All right. Well, we got to go to the wolf system.
And there we go. Julian Z says, how about just a simple costume for streams in October? Hold on, I gotta power up my grav drive. Uh, probably not the shield, homies. Particle beam, laser missile. The shield back up there. And grab that. <laughs> Well, you didn't put us into a planet, so we must be in the right place. Sarah, you sound surprised every time. Um, Julian Z says, how about just a simple costume for streams in October? I mean, then I'd have to wear a, an uncomfortable costume. I don't know. Is that something the chat really, really wants? Welcome to the den. If you have business, feel free to land. All of October? October's a big month. There are like six weeks in October, right? It feels like a really long one. Um, every every week a new costume? That's just huge commitment there. I don't know. Solid docking job there. Nice work. Sarah's more of my fan than the adoring fan is. Whew. Always a satisfying moment to return to your ship. We know it gets Sarah excited. Solid docking. Great grav jump. <laughs> Ever wonder how the Crimson Good Fleet to see seems you. to be everywhere? It's because they have little outposts everywhere. There were so many facilities abandoned after the colony war, the pirates used them as forward operating bases all over the settled systems. Well, I don't recall asking, UC security random guard person, but thank you for that. Certainly. Okay, we're going to go to cell and miscellaneous and harvested organs. There's the us Los Angeles. I need to finish off all of my snow globes as well. Am I carrying anything else that needs to go? Uh, yeah, I've got the technician's trucker space suit. I've got a couple of backpacks here, both of which are not very interesting. And look at all these helmets. Worse, 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 worse. Explorer adventure hat. Hey, cool. Where did I get the cowboy hat? That's my first cowboy hat. I gotta, I gotta save it. I want to wear it. Yeah, I'm gonna wear the cowboy hat. No, I sold it. Ah, crap. I didn't mean it. I thought it was in my inventory. Hold on, hold on. We're gonna go back. Back to buy. Buy back. Yes. Okay. All right, anything else I want to sell while I'm here? No, I'm, not, I'm still in buy. Let's go to sell. And uh, advanced solstice, anti-personnel refined coachman, cornered mag shear. Is that better or worse than the one that I currently have? Halfway nuts says just wear the new homestead costume everywhere. I don't have it. I have to complete that side quest multiple times before I get to keep the costume. If I had it, I totally would. <laughs> um... This is probably my best space cutlass, but I think I have one in storage. Is that... 12 physical damage, a 300 fire rate. Alright, I've got 1300 rounds for that. That's not bad. That's... Not bad. Wait, where's my... What happened to my Gatling gun? Didn't I have a Gatling gun? Where's my minigun? I thought I had a minigun. Regulator. Shotgun. Sniper. That's, uh, my Ash to Tamer. Oh, I swapped it out for this. Right. That's 58 with a fire rate of 40. That's 12 with a fire rate of 300. I mean, I'd have to do some quick math, but I think that the DPS is going to be higher for this. 
Let's try this. Just because I've got the ammo for it, I might as well use it. Am I using any other... Am I using that ammunition anywhere else? I'm not. 50 MI. Let's use it. Cornered mag shear. Let's put that in the boosted calibrated slot. Alright, uh, but I'm not going to sell this as it is my only one. Oh, my cowboy hat. Gotta put the cowboy hat on. Oh yeah, I'm a space cowboy. Any thoughts, Andresia? Ah, uh, hello. I am always willing to carry an extra weapon. Or two. Or three. <laughs> okay. Okay. There it is. I gave it to her. No, no, no. That's my second one. And she's got my Ash to Tamer. And my med theft. Oh, she's got all my good stuff. And that. That was not good. I'm so glad I'm not using that weapon more often. Okay. I don't think I want to sell anything that she's carrying. Back to it, then. Back to it. I try not to trade in gossip, but if you have any verifiable information... Can I actually give him information? It's a little surprising, isn't it? No. Au revoir, as they say. I need to go back to the UNN or whatever and give them updates on all of my exploits. It's been a while. Mr. Master Chief says, careful when doing this deep cover quest, Ox. You only get two chances with the United Colonies SISDAF. If you commit two crimes, they will put you in jail or you will have no choice but to flee them and join the Crimson Fleet. Well, I mean... I am going undercover, right? So as long as I don't murder anybody, I should be okay. Well, I mean, you've done this and I haven't, so I'll, t I'll take your advice. But I'll be really careful. And we're loose. Technicolor Tube says, I missed the rare book, Gateway to Heavens, halfway through this quest line, and now I can never travel to Dubai on Earth. Oh my god. You mean you can never go back? Technicolor Tube, please let me know if I'm in the area so that I don't miss that rare book. Right, let's go to the UC Vigilance, is it? Present 99 says mag shear guns are awesome, but I rather work with the Baroon weapons if you ever find some treasure them. Okay, I will. Present 99. I don't think I have any Baroon weapons, so yeah. Oh, this is so cool. We've got a fleet around this moon. Look at all these ships. Welcome, Captain. We've been expecting you. You're clear to dock at docking port one. Yeah, you've probably been expecting me for weeks now. I think it's been a while since I got this quest. Wow, look at this huge ship. All right, let's cycle that airlock and get aboard. Sarah, you're not even my actual I cannot companion. wait to see how the UC is throwing its weight around today. Okay, speak to the SISDEF guard, and I guess that's you. Welcome aboard the UC Vigilance. Did you have any questions before I escort you to the commander? What can you tell me about the UC Vigilance? I'm not authorized to divulge information about this vessel. Suffice to say, it's one of the toughest ships in the UC's arsenal. 
Andrea, she's taking a nap. Look, she's got her eyes closed. She's just doing a standing meditation is what she's doing. Before I meet Commander Ikande, is there anything I should know? Yeah, listen to him carefully. The commander's a one and done kind of officer. In other words, he hates to repeat himself. Other than that, just observe standard military decorum and it should keep you from serving any time on the ship's cleaning detail. Well, we could say I have about a million questions, but they can wait for the commander. We could say none, I'm eager to get started or I'm here on official Vanguard business. So I'd prefer to speak to the commander. <laughs> Let's just do this. Of course, if you'd follow me, please. So, you're the vanguard that took down that Terramorph on Tau City. You've made quite an impression around here. Everyone upstairs is talking about it. Damn, that must have been one hell of a firefight. I almost regret missing out on all the fun. Of course, we don't normally see that kind of action on the Vigilance, but we have our moments. All right, Vanguard. Take the lift up to Ops. Commander Akande should be waiting for you. Good luck. Okay, will do. Uh, you're not gonna get upset at me if I just sort of walk around a little bit. Nice beret. Okay, hello. By the way, love that beret. Just, just adorable. You both look so cute. Can I? Oh, there's the brig. The brig is this way. You guys aren't gonna mind if I just uh, explore the brig. Alex Vong. Ikande's on level two. Try not to touch anything until he actually clears you. Right, I guess we gotta go talk to him first and then we can have a free reign yes. of the ship. This is so cool. I want a ship like this. Pardon. Wow. The United Colonies really don't mess around. Hello. Can we try and focus on the matter at hand, please? Dude, I just got here. Ah, there you are. Commander Kibwe Kande, UC Sistef. Glad to have you aboard. I was beginning to think you were having second thoughts about Commander Tuala's offer. <laughs> Is that a comment about how long it's taken me to actually do this quest? Alright, UC Sysdef? Is that another division of the UC military? UC Sysdef is a division of the UC Navy. While they handle big picture stuff, we deal specifically with pirates. Oh. Since you're already involved with the Vanguard, I don't have to underline how important your contribution will be to the security of our spaceways. Let's go with, I still don't quite understand why I'm here, so that he can explain to us what our purpose is. Yes, I know. I was intentionally vague when I advised Mast of my needs. But rest assured, I'll answer all your questions in due time. So, now that you're part of the team, allow me to introduce you to your new home. Home? This is the operation center of the UC Vigilance. Sysdef's nerve center dedicated to the destruction of the Crimson Fleet. Yes. What exactly is the Crimson Fleet that we can ask this late into the game? We should know by now, but we'll ask it anyway. Hmm, that's strange. According to your file, you've encountered them before. On Vectera specifically. They were the pirates that attacked your mining outpost. I'm surprised you don't remember. Where is the Vigilance located right now? I mean, we, 
Why, are, why do we have this option to ask this question? We're around Phobos. We are currently in the Sol system, in deep orbit around Phobos. As to why, I'll explain momentarily. Impressive ship, we can say. But I don't see where I fit in. Whether this ship is impressive or not, you're the key element that we've been lacking. We need eyes and ears inside the Crimson Fleet. Someone who can feed us information, evidence, and expose their weaknesses. The catch is that you can't just knock on their front door and ask for an application. Getting inside is going to take some finesse. It's a good thing I've maxed out my persuasion. We could say, I assume you've chosen me because I'm expendable. Let's get one thing straight right now, soldier. I don't care if you're from the Vanguard, the Navy, or the technician that scrapes the carbon scoring off the engine nozzles. In my eyes, your past service no longer matters. You're now an agent of SysDev, meaning that it's my job to keep you alive. I prefer a more direct approach. It takes more than finesse to catch the attention of a pirate. I assume you already have a plan in mind? In mind, or we could pass a persuasion check to say, Get me in a room with them, and I'll talk them into anything. Good. I have just the right place for you to start. Our intelligence has managed to find a possible opening into the Crimson Fleet through Sersha Borden, one of their contacts. She works for the Trade Authority in Sidonia, so you'll be using a container of Aurora we've loaded on your ship to get her attention. Man of Warp says, is that Javik the Prothean? I wonder if he's thrown anyone out the airlock. Oh, wow, it does sort of sound like Javik. Is it the same voice actor, I wonder? Altair uh, Thaze says, you can have that ship. I call dibs on the Fortuna. <laughs> I like this ship, though. It's so cool. Julian Z says, interesting. I got this quest for accidentally stealing office supplies from Mast, and they treated me like a hardened criminal for the first 10 minutes. <laughs> I see. So, okay. Uh, uh, throughout the broadcast, uh, the several weeks that I've been doing this, people have been if saying... If you would kindly continue. People have been saying that I need to get arrested by the UC so that I can get this quest. And I'm starting to understand now how the two are connected. If you get arrested, they offer you this job because you're already a criminal. Why not pretend to be part of the Crimson Fleet and redeem yourself in the eyes of the UC? Or we can go the UC Vanguard route and do it after proving ourselves that we're capable working with the Vanguard. So two paths leading to the same quest. It's uh, pretty cool that they can do it that way. We can naively, as a neon street rat, say, Aurora? Aurora is a Class A controlled substance that's illegal to transport outside of Neon, a city on Voli. Get caught with this stuff aboard a ship, and you're looking at some serious fines. Where did you get the contraband? That's classified. <laughs> Suffice to say that the smuggler who was previously hauling it will be spending the rest of their life in prison. We could say she can probably sniff out a narc from a sector away. Or that doesn't sound like an ironclad plan to me, or it sounds simple enough. Let's see, I mean, what if she can sniff out an arc? That's right. So it'll be your job to convince this person that you're the real deal. Once you bluff your way into the Crimson Fleet, then the operation proceeds to evidence gathering. That's where my second-in-command, Lieutenant Gillian Toft, comes into the picture. She'll explain everything you need to know. Oh man, I'm gonna love this, aren't I? Why bother gathering evidence? Let's just say my superiors need proof that engaging the Crimson Fleet is a larger priority than they're willing to admit. If we shove enough concrete evidence under their noses, they'll have no choice but to allocate the resources that I've requested. At the same time, we can use the evidence to arrest members of the Crimson Fleet, weakening them enough to strike a fatal blow. Yes, I'm in. We could say if this is the best plan you've got, we're both in trouble. You must have quite a bit of confidence in my abilities. That's, that's a lot to absorb. Or point the way, and I'll get it done. Let's try that. Eager to get going. Good. Remember, 
This entire operation rests on your ability to infiltrate the Crimson Fleet and bring us the evidence we need to take them down. President 99 says, nice memento to know. Amin Shimmerman is voicing a lodge of characters, and I mean the famous Quark. Guess who? Um, uh, I don't know who in Starfield he is voicing. You'll have to remind me. What if I get in over my head, we can ask? Then you better learn to swim, because you're diving right into the deep end on this one. I've studied your profile. I know you can do this. I'm not about to throw away someone's life on a whim or a prayer. Just use your best judgment. Trust your instincts. And watch your back. I'm just doing this for the money. I'm guessing it's too late to back out of the deal, or I'll do my... But see, the, this dialogue option doesn't really make sense, considering the path that we chose. We're here not because we have to be, but because we're doing uh, the UC a favor. But this option sounds like we're making a plea deal, like we're doing this to get out of doing hard time, which would make sense if we're here because we got apprehended. So it's it's not a seamless transition of the two paths into this uh, quest line, but it's still really interesting. I'll do my best, we can say. I wouldn't expect any less. Look, before you begin, I want to make something perfectly clear. As an undercover operative for UC Sysdef, you'll be expected to follow our code of conduct and ethics. Allow yourself to stray too far off the path, and you stand a good chance of spiraling out of control. Oh, okay. Oh, they're going to present me with a lot of moral quandaries, aren't they? Uh, President 99 says, it's Walter. Jeez, Ox, I'm so disappointed. Like, it's been a while since I've watched Deep Space Nine. All right, it's been years, long time. It came out in the 90s, all right? Give me a break. What do you mean, straight too far off the path? The Crimson Fleet doesn't follow the rules. They only abide by one thing, money. All of their morals and social graces fall by the wayside in pursuit of their greed. At first glance, this can appear quite enticing. So I'm warning you not to get lured into their trap. Think you can handle that? I mean, what if we get in a situation where in order to maintain our cover, we have to do something a little gray area? Maybe not so gray area. Maybe we're going deep into the red. Uh, can you explain SysDev's code of conduct and ethics? To put it simply, you can't go into every situation with guns blazing. Think before you act. Calculate what you're doing and pull the trigger only when it's absolutely necessary. At the end of the day, your primary goal is taking down the Crimson Fleet. That's the greater good. Pardon me. Uh-oh, he said the forbidden phrase, the greater good. Only the baddies say the greater good. Bustavo Plays says, I see a lot of reloading in, the f in your future, Ox, and I don't mean not your gun. <laughs> I will be making heavy use of the hard save feature, that's for sure. We could say I don't exactly do well following rules and regulations. I can't make any promises, or I'll, I, can, I can stay the course. That's what I wanted to hear. Anyway, it's time to hand you over to Lieutenant Toft. She'll brief you about the details of the evidence-gathering portion of the operation. Now, get out of here, and good luck. Can you tell me more about my expected behavior as an agent? While you're running with the Crimson Fleet, you're undoubtedly going to be faced with some morally gray decisions. It's going to be difficult for you to weigh the consequences of pulling the trigger while maintaining your cover. Do what you have to do, but remember why you're out there in the first place. What if I don't have a choice? Then you do what you have to do. The Crimson Fleet has the potential to kill hundreds, even thousands of people per year. If it takes a few deaths to maintain your cover, then so be it. But only as an absolutely final resort. This is not a licensed killing spree. Understood? 
Understood. We could pass a neon street rat check to say, I have never had a problem doing what I had to to survive. As long as you can distinguish between surviving and thriving, you'll do just fine. Look, I can see that you're struggling with this. So let me simplify this for you. If there's a route to your goal which doesn't involve killing innocent people, I'm urging you to follow that path. Okay. Use your instincts. I'm certain you'll do the right thing. That's pretty straightforward. I, I don't think... I'm, I'm confident. I'm not confident. I'm hopeful this is not going to be as difficult as it sounds. What happens if I get arrested while I'm undercover? For your own safety, nobody but myself and the crew of the Vigilance will be aware that you're working for the United Colonies. Basically, if you land in jail, you're going to have to deal with the fines. Do you have any other information about... Sauri's Bowden? All we know is that she's been with the Trade Authority for years. Which means she's been privy to some seriously shady deals. She's shrewd and she's diligent. The only reason we were able to connect her with the Crimson Fleet at all was thanks to an informant. I'm afraid she's the best lead we've got. How will I maintain contact with you? That's easy to answer. You don't. We'll be monitoring your activities from the Vigilance and attempting to keep it within your vicinity. When you feel you've gathered enough evidence and at the completion of your assignments, head back here for a debrief. Beyond that, you're completely on your own. Wow. He's essentially asking me to single-handedly take down the Crimson Fleet. Fine, I can do that. As you were. All right. Look at this place. Just amazing. I love it. Lieutenant Jillian Toft. All right. We don't have a lot of time, so I need you to listen up. While you're working undercover, it's imperative that you gather as much evidence as possible. If you find any records that look suspicious or incriminating, you bring it to me. Is that understood? Why do you need physical evidence? Well, since it isn't every day we stumble across a criminal's fully written confession, we need to build a case against our suspects. The more evidence we acquire, the stronger our case becomes. And knowing the Crimson Fleet, they'll leave plenty of evidence for you to find. What if I can't find anything? I'd scour every inch of wherever the Crimson Fleet sends you. Otherwise, you're wasting our time and risking your neck for nothing. Hey. Criminals are sloppy. Look hard enough and I'm certain you'll stumble across their mess. If you were looking for somebody who explores every inch of everything, you found the right guy, I can do that. Um, so basically you want me to steal from thieves. Rationalize it however you like, but that evidence is critical to the success of Commander Akande's operation. I want data slates, computer downloads, handwritten notes. Hell, I'll take anything if it'll get those bastards thrown into the brig. <clears throat> I'm confused. Are we trying to imprison the pirates or kill them? Haven't you been paying attention? Our goal here is the complete eradication of the Crimson Fleet. In order to do that, we need to dismantle them piece by piece from within. If you bring me evidence, we can make arrests and slowly drain their resources. Think of it as a death by a thousand tiny cuts. Hmm. Sounds like I touched a nerve, or I'm simply trying to understand my task, Lieutenant, or sounds like you have a personal vendetta against the Crimson Fleet. Or we can pass a security check to say, if there's incriminating data out there, I'll find it. For the sake of the settled systems, I hope you're right. That minor skirmish you had with them on Vectera was nothing compared to the death and destruction those pirates leave behind. If you've seen what I've seen, you'd understand why I'm pushing you so hard. Man of Warp says, is that Scribe Halen? No, it's Scribe... What's her name from Fallout 76? Uh, Steel Dawn and Steel Rain. Scribe... What's her name? It... Or maybe it's Scribe Halen, but... It does... I think it's the other Scribe from Fallout 76. What's her name? <clears throat> you feel like talking about it? What? No. It's personal. 
It has nothing to do with you. Just stick to the mission and you'll be fine. We could say Valdez. Thank you. Musborn says Valdez. It sounds like Scribe Valdez. I could be wrong. Maybe it is Scribe Halen, but... Maybe it's just because I've spent more time with Scribe Valdez recently. But it sounds a lot like Scribe Valdez. I'm no hero. I'm here because it's my duty as a member of the Vanguard. Or I've seen my fair share of violence. Or I'll bring you as much evidence as I can find. Or we could pass a soldier check to say, believe me. I've seen my share of hell, Toft. Yes, of course. I'm sorry if I brought up any painful memories. Oh, uh, one last thing. A bit of good news, actually. Commander Akande has authorized a credit disbursement for each piece of evidence that you return as compensation for your efforts. Why would you be paying credits during a military operation? Well, that's just it. You're not career military, are you? And speaking frankly, you're completely out of pocket during this operation. You'll be paying for your own supplies and other unexpected incidentals. So if I were you, I'd stop asking questions and accept the compensation. <laughs> Credits, now you're speaking my language. Or I don't need payment to do what's right. Well, that's very generous. It's not generous, it's motivational. Commander Akande's idea. All right. We've loaded a container of Aurora into your ship's cargo hold. We're also providing you with a sample you can use to tease the goods. We've cleared your ship for launch. Proceed to Sidonia. Make contact with Searsha Bowden. And with any luck, she'll point you to the Crimson Fleet. That should do it. You're dismissed. I mean, am I going to get scanned when I get to Sidonia? What if I get caught with the container of Aurora in my cargo hold? Don't worry. The container's been registered with UC Security, so you shouldn't have any trouble. Even if you're scanned. Okay. Of course, if we find out you tried to sell it to someone outside the boundaries of this particular operation, well, I don't think I need to tell you the consequences of making that mistake. <laughs> what if I go to the wolf system and sell it and then come back and say, yeah, I've lost my cargo shipment. Can I get some more? What's going to happen to the people you arrest? We'll be keeping them close at hand until this operation is complete. So, we'll be holding them in the Vigilance's brig. If you're feeling particularly ruthless, you could always head down there and say hello. I'm sure they'll be thrilled to see you. Christina Sierra says, it's not Valdez. This is the same voice actress as Halen. I just looked it up. Okay, so Man of Warp, you were right. Your ears are spot on the money there. Uh, mine were the ones that were off a little bit. Uh, but yeah, thank you so much for that one, Christina Sierra um, and Man of Warp. Did you lose your train of thought? Yeah, kind of. I was talking to other people. Uh, sorry, I feel like discussing your personal experience with the Crimson Fleet? Not really, no. I've learned to keep my personal experiences separate from the job. Wow, that was evasive as hell. It's odd that you know more about me than I know about you. If something's on your mind, it'll make you, it'll make you feel better to get it out in the open. Or I respect your privacy. <laughs> We've got three ways to try and convince her to talk to us about it. Uh, I mean, I'm curious, but not that curious. I guess I'll say I respect your privacy. Don't get me wrong. I appreciate that you care. It's just that I don't feel like now's an appropriate time to be discussing these things. Let's just stick to the job at hand and concentrate on the mission. Okay. But, uh, maybe we can talk about it some other time. Okay. Okay, Lieutenant Tom. Sounds good. I'll be here if you have any more questions. Change the Punk says, I'm sad I still haven't found uh, Garrus' voice actor, Brandon Keener. He was a bunch of the random voices in Fallout 4. He was. He was all over the place in Fallout 4. Excuse me. <clears throat> right, let's explore. Yay. Howdy. Howdy, howdy. Give me some of that loot. Yes, what? Any rare books? The Orchard Merchant, Omega, yes. The Last what? Days. And I Excuse can take me. all of this. It's not set to own. This is great. The Light of Stars. 
Written in, in the summer of 1838, Longfellow's The Light of Stars is a stirring tribute to the cosmos before humanity had ever explored it. The following is a single beautiful stanza. <clears throat> Within my breast there is no light but the cold light of stars. I give the first watch of the night to the red planet Mars. The start of the unconquered will, he rises in my breast, serene and resolute and still and calm and self-possessed. Fields of Everglass, Dover Beach, History of the Pirates. It's great that we're getting all of these books. I mean, I found one that I okay, had hello. that I hadn't found before. That's the UC Vigilance. Hey. A name. Giovanni Abidi. Oh, hello. I don't think we've met. Are you by chance new here? Uh, you seem unsure. I'd be willing to bet you're new here, too. No, I've been here for some time. Or, yeah, Commander Ikunda just recruited me to join Sistaff. We could say, my name is Oxhorn. Nice to meet you. Wait, I know that name. You, you're that dangerous Terramorph Slayer everyone is talking about. Well, don't worry. I'm not scared of you. My godmother was a member of the Strikers Gang, and you're not even half as scary as her. <laughs> my name is Javanta. I'm an ensign with the maintenance and robotics team. And just between you and me, I don't think you're dangerous. <laughs> Do you? What, what's with all this stuff about being, me, being, being, being dangerous? I don't, I don't recall being dangerous. We can say I'm dangerous. I've killed people, sometimes for sport, most times for fun. I'm a teddy bear, a big softy. I can handle myself in a fight, if that's what you mean. I don't know what the rumors are, but I'm just me. Or we can pass a neon street rack, uh, rat jack to say, Strikers, huh? I'm from neon myself. Are you really? Oh, what a coincidence. I do you miss home at all? Oh, I need to go back the next time I get shore leave. Anyway, it was very nice to meet you. If you want to talk some more, I will be here. <laughs> that's, that's it, huh? Okay. <clears throat> Why did you join Sistaff? Huh. That's a good question. It was what you'd call a minor moral crisis. <laughs> I wasn't happy with my old job at Drone. I, I felt like my life was on an assembly line. Eh? Everything was about profit, and nothing had any real meaning. But then it occurred to me, if I'm so miserable, I could just leave. <laughs> so one day I just did. <laughs> Sistef is far from perfect, but our goal is noble. I can sleep soundly knowing my work will be for a cause that is just. What are your duties here on the ship? Oh, I'm part of the maintenance team that makes sure the Vigilance is operating smoothly. On the robotic side, I take care of the model A's on the ship and make sure they're treated with respect and dignity. They are people, after all, just like us. What? What? <laughs> <clears throat> Have you seen robots abused and mistreated? Not here. But at Drone, clients would come in and bring their robots for maintenance. And the condition these robots were in was appalling. Not to mention the way they were talked down to. Personally, I think the way you treat your robots says a lot about you. To me, robots are just tools. Robots are sentient, but they aren't people and don't get, uh, and don't get the same rights. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Are robots in this universe sentient? I haven't, we haven't met a single robot with the exception of that one robot we found on Nira, who was exterminating those creatures. Aside from him, we haven't found a single robot that exhibited any quote-unquote symptoms of sentience. Ah. Uh, yeah, that's right, Kaiser, Technicolor Tube, says Kaiser, yeah. We can talk later. If you're not feeling I mean, I'm not, I'm not opposed to the idea that they could become sentient. I just haven't seen any evidence that all robots are sentient. Um, so I don't like either of the, any of these options. We could say they're just tools, that they are sentient, but they don't have rights. 
Or we should treat them the same as all living things? Uh, all right, let's try that. See, I knew there was something I liked about you. The machines are very dear to me. Think of it this way. How can we expect a robot to fight by our side if we won't fight for their right to exist? So I always do my best to treat them as my equals. Is there anything you want to know about me? Oh, I have so many questions. That is not enough time to ask them all. But I won't ask about your vanguard duties, as I'm sure you're tired of people asking. Instead, I will ask you a very simple question. <clears throat> Are you a morning, afternoon, or night person? Oh, dear. We could say I don't really like labels. <laughs> I feel like they're too constricting. Uh, I'm a night person. Oof, then we can't be friends. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> Course, but I prefer the early hours myself. <laughs> uh, Nails says, so what about Vasco? Is he sentient? No, no, he's not. <clears throat> like, we've spent a lot of time talking with him, and he, he does not he, he does not really have a personality. He's, he's not sentient. Um, we could say that's probably not unusual for a military vessel. Yes, but... I like getting up before even the personnel, when I have the coffee maker all to myself. Aww. But the thing I like best is the quiet. When I can look out into space and see the whole galaxy is asleep. When it's that quiet, the only noise you hear is from the vigilance itself. In fact, we keep each other company when the world is too busy snoring in their beds. It makes it so the mornings are just for us. Time zones must not exist for this person. The entire galaxy is asleep. I mean, there are several. I mean, that's only Earth time zones. Imagine time zones on Jemison. Anyway, all right. Goodbye. Goodbye, Betty. Uh, that was an interesting conversation. <clears throat> Howdy. Okay, and back around. So there's this door we could go through that leads to the bridge, and I definitely want to explore that more in a minute. You should ask before you depart the vigilance. Uh, let's finish exploring this section. <clears throat> Mr. Master Chief says, getting a synth vibes here of Fallout 4 on Givanti's chat. We should team up. Yeah, and I don't really know if it's earned Hello. yet. Like the whole, can a robot be a person thing? was earned in Fallout 4 based on um, how human-like the synths yes. were and the long history of having synths in the Commonwealth. But um, the robots, we've barely touched on sentience in robots <clears throat> in this game at all. It's really not a big topic of, uh, oh. of conversation or disagreement in this universe. So I don't know if it was really earned just here. Whoa, sorry, don't hate me, guys. Man, you barely touch something in this universe and people can start pulling out their guns and shooting at you. Right, who's that? Can I talk to this person? Excuse me. Nope, it's a cadet. And those books I can't interact with. Okay. Is it true you're from Neon Ensign? I've never been, but I've heard rumors. I worked for Drawn, yes. It wasn't as wild as people say. <laughs> Just yes. Pardon. Hey, Combat Catalog 2 further increases the range and accuracy of combat tech weapons. Right. Sysdef crew uniform. Plus 5% reload speed. So I'd be swapping out um, physical for energy, essentially. Now I like the UC Sec uniform that I've got. Though I probably shouldn't wear that if I'm going to be infiltrating the Crimson Fleet. Commander's Office Terminal. <clears throat> pirate Operations. Reports of pirate activity continue to plague the settled systems. 
While the mission boards supply us with intel, the fleet often changes its targets to keep us guessing. According to Toft's report, there are three types of operations the fleet uses to fill its coffers. Piracy, smuggling, and theft. They have honed these operations under their current leadership, and we would do well to study their tactics so that we can better protect the settled systems. Crimson Fleet Tactics There is an old saying that to fight the enemy, one must know their enemy. The Afro aphorism, while trite, still holds true today. Like many disorganized groups, the Crimson Fleet uses guerrilla tactics. They utilize the element of surprise to their advantage, grab jumping and quickly striking their targets before fleeing the scene. These are not revelatory tactics. Throughout history, ambush, deception, sabotage, and espionage have been the tools smaller groups employed to outmaneuver larger naval forces. SysDef was formed in order to fight this foe in a non-traditional sense. It's up to the leadership to find creative ways to do that without sacrificing the principles we hold dear. Personal Documents, State of the Vigilance. After speaking with Commander Natara, Lieutenant Toft has assured me that Project Svalin has been fully tested by the engineers at SY920 and approved by MAST. If everything goes according to plan, we will begin implementation immediately. When the time comes, this upgrade will be essential for what we have planned. Hmm. Project Svalin. The Crimson Fleet Threat. It is no secret that we've had trouble explaining to the officials at mass the urgency of the Crimson Fleet menace, despite the fact that they are so disorganized, or that they are a disorganized band of pirates, they must be treated as a criminal organization that poses a threat to the safety of the settled systems. Unfortunately, without intel on the inner workings of the Crimson Fleet, much of this is speculation. We need someone on the inside to help us fill in the blanks. This is why I've requested the records of every prisoner detained by the United Colonies. Surely there is a candidate among them who will suit our needs. While well, they really designed this quest to be for if you get apprehended by the UC for smuggling. I suppose adding it to the UC Vanguard quest line <clears throat> was a, uh, a side thought. Resolve and purpose. There are years where nothing happens and years that can define a life. I was 16 when I first took to the skies, 17 when it all came crashing down. It began with a ship. Earlier that year, my father had salvaged a wreck from the war, a B-class Deimos fighter from an abandoned star yard. It was old, outdated, and to put it bluntly, a piece of junk. The controls were shaky, the plating was rusted, and the engine coughed like it had a bad lung. But none of that mattered to me. I was hooked from the very first grab jump. You see, up until that point, I had often struggled to focus. Nothing I did had any longer term had any long term appeal. That all changed the moment I took that Demos junker out to the space lanes. For the first time in my life I could see a life for me beyond the present. This ship, for all its loose wires, dents, and puckmarks, gave me purpose, something I could devote my life to. Three months later, I was an escort for my father's freighter. Ten months later, we were attacked by the Crimson Fleet. Most days, <clears throat> I think about my father, the kind, gentle man who raised me. I think about how much poorer this galaxy is without his laughter soaring through its membrane. And other times, my thoughts turn to his son, the boy with the star-bright eyes and the future he lost. When I am confronted by this boy, my resolve begins to wane. I want him to forgive me for the man I've become, one consumed by hate and vengeance. I stand wordless as he tugs at the corners of my jacket, tears flowing down his cheeks, begging me to let my anger go. And in that moment, every part of me wants to embrace him and tell him exactly what he needs to hear. I want to tell him I will drop this accursed chase and give his future the chance it deserves. But instead, I turn away. I leave him crying, alone in the void of space. But what he does not realize is that I am doing this for him. I fight the Crimson Fleet for all the fathers and futures lost to a world that never should have been. And when I think of them, my resolve returns, and I have purpose once more. 
that is one of the best pieces of lore I think we have found in the game. That was so well written. Oh, that was amazing. Was that... No, it doesn't... It's not named, so we don't know who wrote that. But I'm assuming that it's the guy who gave us the quest. That was really well done. Man. All right, Chad is saying this is a unique outfit, so I'm going to go ahead and take it. Hello. Did you have to chase that fleet ship through that asteroid belt? Hey. Yes, sir. Protocol says we prioritize... Okay, yeah, we've got UC Sysdef mission board. At some point, the risk isn't worth catching a few criminals. Oh, right, sir. My mistake. Just try and show a little more concern for your personal safety. Okay, yes, so the quest, the quest wants us to go down that elevator again, and I will, but in order to get all lore, my instincts okay. tell me to go Hello? in the opposite direction of the quest marker, and so we shall go here. Oh, yeah. Oh, look at this bridge. Oh my god. Pardon. Oh, it's beautiful. Amazing. We need more recreational activities on this ship. <clears throat> like what? Darts? <laughs> I've seen you shoot. Don't even bother. I want this bridge. Can't I have this bridge for one of my ships? Why are you pointing your gun at me? Dude, chill out. <clears throat> Let's see, Sysdef recruit. Wow, this is so yes. cool. A jump seat. Man, I should have done this a long time ago. This is what I can get into. Hey. hey hi, you've got your gun drawn, man. Hey, there's my ship. <laughs> it looks so tiny compared to this hulking, massive thing. We're getting reports of increased fleet activity near Voli. That's a free star system. Still, if pirates are involved, shouldn't we go after them? It depends. But the name on our chest says UC, and given the FC fought us tooth and nail to get their independence, our gunship showing up on their doorstep won't be seen as neighborly. Well, I'm glad we came here. Really small, no lore, but man, it's cool. Okay, well, that's the Vigilance Explored. Particular love for the UC, or their bravado. Andrea, I don't know if you and I can get along. Everybody complains Hello. about the UC, but so far, the UC has been great. Excuse like, me. Yes. They what? haven't done great things okay. in the past, but uh -oh. none of the other factions have as well. The Freestar Collective hasn't done great things either. But everyone we've met working for the UC has been principled. They've respected uh, the other factions, like the Freestar Collective. They haven't tried to... Okay, I take that back. They did keep What's-His-Name alive, which is a violation of the Treaty of Narian, or, or the Colony Wars, or the Treaty of... I think it is the Treaty of Narian, so there was that, but... Uh, Aside from that, they've all been really Howdy. pretty great. All right, can I talk to you now? Oh, he's calling me a mole. What? I don't know about you. Alex? What kind of name is Alex calling me a mole and your name Alex? Come on. Sorry to anybody in the chat if your name is Alex. I was just joking. What do you mean by that? People who work undercover, they're sneaky by nature hard to read. When I fly, I want someone beside me who I can predict. Boxes by the Marquess of Queensbury rules. But you, you're a southpaw. A wild card. We could say I'll earn your trust in time. We could say that's understandable. I'm new here. I could say, you don't know me! <laughs> I don't know him. Like, he's not even showing me his face and he's calling me 
A shady character? Oh, well, I'll say it's understandable. I'm new here. Eh, that isn't it. We've got plenty of green pilots picked right from the Academy. But yours happen to come from a different farm. Vanguard. <sighs> but if Commander Ikande says you're Sistef, then you are one of us. For now. Are you a pilot? You guessed it. In fact, I'd say you've got what linguistic experts call FOGO. A firm grasp of the obvious. <laughs> but I'm not just any pilot. I'm the best. And I've got the kills to prove it. I bet I could fly circles around you. For I don't just grasp the obvious. I have it in a chokehold. Oh dear. Oh dear. <laughs> well, we could say glad to have you on my side. You got some set of manners, kid. The fleet are gonna eat you up. How did you get involved with Sif uh, Sistaff? Long story. I got my start in the academy and made a name for myself hunting the Crimson Fleet. I eventually got recruited to do test flights on a star station orbiting Lloyden's Rock. Me and three other Archangel pilots did some work on some extremely dangerous prototypes. But I called in a few favors and got back home with Sistef. Someone with my talents needs to be here, where the action is. Where did you learn to fly? I cut my teeth on space trucks, believe it or not. Before I got my stripes, I was just another cargo hauler trying to earn an honest wage. But after a couple slick escapes, I got recruited to the academy and went from dodging pirates to hunting them. Thing is, some of my best tricks were with a big rig. Ever try a pitchback with a Hope Tech truck with two fleet wraiths on your tail? Compared to that, doing it with a military fighter is a piece of cake. Well, I wonder if we can recruit him to uh, join our crew later. Try not to forget who you are, okay? It'd break the commander's heart to have to hunt you down. Oh, I'm sure it would, and I'm sure it would break yours too, Alex. Docking port computer. Docking port two. Ship status unoccupied, ready. Clearance authorized UC ships only. Ship information not applicable. Docking port four. Ship status unoccupied, ready. Blah, 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 same stuff. Okay. Docking port computer. Docking port five, unoccupied. Docking port seven, unoccupied. Hmm. This is the first time we've seen docking port computers outside docking ports like this. Yes, what? Which makes me wonder if it's gonna become uh, quest relevant in the future. Well, well, what's up here? Storage. Greg. Wires computer. Hmm. Hello? Hello? Cargo bay. And again, he draws his gun. Dude, I'm just looking around. Interrogation room, inaccessible. I'm assuming this must have been a very different quest if we came here from the brig. Or will we find our way here in the future? 
That'll be interesting. What if this quest revol revolves around us getting the entire Crimson Fleet captured, us among them, and we all wind up in here? Hello. Yes. Hi. This is quite a brig, and it's completely empty. They really haven't had much luck fighting the Crimson Fleet if their entire brig is empty. Oh man, I was kind of hoping for a Hannibal Lecter moment here. Andrea, you're supposed to be following me. Thank you. Okay, well, that's the brig. Can't go to interrogation. We'll keep the brig ready for any pirates you bring in. Oh, nice. So I'll be able to... <laughs> I'll be able to go and, and gloat in front of them. When I bring them in, I'll be able to come here and gloat in front of them. That's great. All right, hey there, uh, can I talk to you? No? no? Some of the guards don't take kindly to the prisoners, but we should try to maintain some decorum. Armin Petrosian. Can I talk to you, Armin? Welcome to the brig. As a member of SysDef, you may talk with the prisoners as long as you are mindful of operation security. As a personal rule, I simply ask that you adhere to UC Navy standards of cleanliness at all times. That means no mud on your boots, your hands are washed, and you are free of any contagious diseases. Why the focus on cleanliness? Besides the fact that it's healthier, a sanitary brig is important for station security. In my experience, a prisoner will hide a ship under a flake of dust if you let them. The cleaner a space is, the easier it is to spot irregularities, both inside the cell and out. Notice that he's holding the gun in his right hand, and yet it's moving independently of his grip. It's actually moving in line with his shoulders or his torso which tells me that the rigging for these particular models is tied to the movement of the torso. So when, I, when it's held in the hand, the hand must be moving in line with the, with the shoulders. That's interesting. We could say sorry to tell you, but I'm kind of a slob. I'll keep things neat and tidy so it won't be a problem or seems a bit excessive, but I tr I'll try my best. Let's say uh, it won't be a problem. Excellent. And all that being said, I understand your mission directive might call for flexibility on my part. So if you need to be a rum-drinking, swashbuckling pirate to do your job, then I will do my best to clean up after you. Yes! I'm all about the rum-drinking, swashbuckling pirate life. What are your thoughts on Commander Akande? He's a good man, singularly focused when it comes to the fleet. But that's not to say he doesn't care about his crew. I can tell you a story as an example if you'd like to hear it. Yeah, but first, does the commander visit the brig often? Usually only when he has business here, but pretty much everyone passes by the brig on their way to other parts of the ship. Given he sees barely a glance of me most days, you'd think he wasn't paying attention. Hence the story, if you've got time. Wrecker Lawson says Alex is a Toonami reference He's Tom's voice actor with the show writer's names. I think I mentioned him a few episodes back. Perhaps, but you know, I'm not very familiar with Toonami, so I'm not able to connect the dots there. Well, he has a story for us, so go ahead. I've got the time. So, I'm a bit of a workaholic, and I forget to take breaks. One day, Commander Ikande passes by the brig and sees me at my desk. He takes one look at my haggard face and says, Officer, I'm headed to the mess hall. If you're not with me in 15 minutes, your services will no longer be required on my ship. I tried to protest, but he was dead serious. So I went. We had lunch, talked about old times, and I went back to the brig refreshed and ready to work. It's little things like that. You can see he pays attention, and that he cares about the people, not just the work. Huh. Sounds like a good boss. 
Michael Findlay says, hello from Scotland, Ox. Love your streams. Thank you. That was Michael's first super chat. Thank you so much, Michael. Good to see that I've got people watching all the way in Scotland. That's amazing. I'm in Seattle myself. Thanks for watching. We, uh, we could say, what if the prisoner is trying to escape? What kind of defenses do we have? We have multiple turrets attached to the ceiling. If you've met Ensign Betty, she's personally calibrated them to ensure they cover the entire area. That being said, firing the turret should be considered a last resort. Well, hopefully we Are can... you going to finish that thought? I, I, you just finished talking, guy. Hopefully we will, we'll, we'll be able to find Enz and Betty later. What kind of prisoners... Wait, we, we, did we talk to Betty? I, th I think we did. What kind of prisoners end up in the brig? The cells you see here are for captured pirates and prisoners of war. If you apprehend any pirates during the course of your missions, they'll be detained here. How do you handle treatment of the prisoners? That's a loaded question. We err on the side of caution here, short of any physical abuse. But with the Crimson Fleet, you have to be very careful. If you give them an inch, they'll take a parsec and find a way to stab you with it. Do the guards get into it with the prisoners? Verbally, yes. There's a lot of bad blood with the fleet stretching across generations, myself included. Sometimes that blood spills over. As long as there's no actual fighting, I tend to let both sides dish it out. That's a good mindset, we could say. Security should be top priority. Security aside, we should try to keep things as humane as possible. Do what you have to do. Pirates don't deserve any mercy. That's what I think. True. The rules for POWs technically don't apply to pirates. It's more of an ethical line we have to be mindful of. But I'll be the first to admit it's not an exact science. And we've made mistakes in the past with both the carrot and the stick. As chief officer of this brig, my worst fear is that we'll someday repeat them. All right. You're dismissed. How am I? Brig computer. Brig protocols. The Vigilance Brig is a high-level confinement facility for captured and pretrial prisoners charged with piracy. The Brig ensures the security and safe transport of all prisoners to United Colonies Correctional Facilities. Under the guidance of Commander Akande and ranking officers of the Vigilance, the Brig staff is responsible for maintaining and enforcing these directives. Then transfer protocols. Handcuffs and a guard escort are standard when transporting prisoners. Those assigned to maximum security cells may require additional security measures to prevent escape. We should attempt to accommodate prisoner requests within reason. Looser restraints and comfortable seating can be supplied upon request. The United Colonies will typically use mid-sized demo ships for shuttling prisoners to the correctional facility. Nervous, dude. Really nervous. Wires computer. I want to get into storage. Which computer? Which computer does it require? Oh man. Well, I think that's it. Bye, How's Alex. The pirating business. Doing fine, Alex. Docking port computer. Docking port one. Status occupied, clearance authorized, ship information division, SISDEF, Captain Oxhorn, ship Star Eagle, ship status operational. Docking port three, unoccupied. Right. To the ship. There. What a cool system. Wow. I just
just love seeing this fleet. It's so cool. Well, they have laden us with a bunch of illegal goods. Let's check out our inventory. And in the aid section, we should find... No, he, they didn't give us any in the aid section. Is it all in the cargo? Let's go to the cargo hold. Let's go to miscellaneous. But it wouldn't be in miscellaneous. It would be in aid. We have a shipment of Aurora, right? Yeah, it's not in miscellaneous. Let's go to aid. No, where's all the Aurora? Okay. Is it just a quest item? Resources? It's not marked as contraband. Oh, is it because I was looking for contraband? Let's go to missile. Let's go to aid. Nope, there's no Aurora. Miscellaneous. No Aurora. Switch back to our inventory. Aid. No Aurora. Miscellaneous. There it is. Aurora sample. Oh, wait a minute. It's not uh, processed Aurora. The Aurora we get on Neon is a beverage. It's a processed drink. But this sample is just a blue powder. Okay. Right. To Sidonia. Speak to Sarai's Bowden at the Trade Authority. All right, so we know that she's working with the Crimson Fleet. And we're trying to find evidence of this. So now we're undercover. From here on out, we got to be careful. I wish they took uh, costumes and outfits into consideration, because I'm wearing a UC Sysdef outfit. Probably not the sort of thing I want to wear if I'm trying to be undercover with the Crimson Fleet. It's like walking up to somebody wearing Watch a policeman's uh, outfit sneaky. and saying, hey, got any drugs? Hope nothing bad happens today. Trade authority. How's it going? Can I help you? Right, let's do our first hard save of the broadcast. If you're here to buy or sell, you might want to talk to Octai. I'm busy. Octai? Who's that? Octai and Bayar. He's the head of our Sidonia branch. If you want to do some trading, he's the one you need to be talking to. I'm busy. Okay, okay, we gotta be... Sneaky here. We could say, I'm looking to unload a sensitive shipment. We could say, I've brought something that should interest the Crimson Fleet. That probably gives away our hand. We could say, I'm here to sell, but I'm looking for you. Let's just say that we're looking to unload a sensitive shipment. And by sensitive, I'm guessing you mean something you don't want UC security sticking their noses into. I can probably help you with that. What have you got for me? Let's talk price first. We could say, I'm looking to sell a shipment of Aurora. A pirate would probably talk about price first. Let's do that. I'm not talking price until I know what the hell I'm buying. Take a look at this sample. Hmm. Aurora, huh? Nice. A little too hot to handle, though. What else you got? If the trade authority is not interested, that says a great deal. I, I could say, guess the people that told me you were the best were wrong. 
<laughs> I thought the trade authority would buy anything, or if you can't handle it, point me to someone who can. Let's try that. All I'm going to point at is the ceiling, with my middle finger. Get that stuff out of here before UC security catches on. Of course, if there's a finder's fee you're offering, I might, well, bend the rules a little bit. Interesting, and I'm already starting to shell out credits here. We could say, I have to pay you just to find out where to sell my shipment? <laughs> you must be new at this game, love, so I'm gonna let that one slide. In our business, nothing gets done until money is exchanged, even if that means leaving a credit on each and every rung of the ladder as you climb your way up. What if I just blow your brains out and ask someone else? <laughs> I mean, that is something a Crimson Fleet person would say, so we'll try it. Sure, go ahead. You shoot me and the TA will have bounty hunters on your ass before you even get back to the spaceport. Listen, love, I've heard it all. Threats bounce right off, so either cough up the finder's fee or try and sell that shipment on your own. That was... Andresia liked that. I just got an affinity boost by choosing the violent option with Andresia. Present99 says you might want to add an EMP to your weapon rotation and learn to shoot it correctly. Charge the shot for a second for maximum efficiency. Present99, good tip. Thank you so much. We could say, I refuse to pay for that information, or we can say, pay a thousand credits. Does this work? You know, it's funny. Suddenly, I do remember someone who might be able to unload that stuff for you. Ah. Just demand the extra credits up front next time. These games are juvenile and tiresome. There's a buddy of mine who runs with the Crimson Fleet. Goes by the name Adler Kemp. If he isn't passed out, you can find him killing the rest of his brain cells at the Broken Spear. Oh, and uh, it's been a pleasure doing business with you. Yeah, you got a free me. Thousands. If you are free soon, you have a child or children could we talk? Enroll them in a United Colonies distance learning program today. I have something I wanted to say, but I confess I am afraid of how you will react. Put your children on the right path to success and enroll today. Andresia, I'm just glad you want to talk. It seems like it's difficult to increase your affinity at all. We could say I'd rather talk about this later. The only thing that matters to me is that I can count on you. Nothing would change my opinion of you. If it's that bad, maybe you shouldn't say anything. Hmm. Let's try count on you. I know. That is part of the reason why I feel it necessary to be honest. I know that you said you prefer to be surrounded by others, unlike me. But Constellation means something to us both. And I must be honest about why. The little I have spoken of my history has been nothing but truth. I worked with smugglers. I have caused my share of pain and suffering. What I have left out, until now, is that all of that was done on behalf of House Varun. Oh! Uh, my family. It all starts to make sense. Of course she's from House Varun. Because she's dressed like it. <laughs> she's wearing a House Varun outfit, and I'm just now realizing it. We could say House Varun, what's that? She's probably going to dislike that. But I want to hear what she has to say. If she does dislike it, I'll reload her save, because I don't want to take the affinity hit with her. You have not heard the name? I am surprised. Generations ago, our founder, Jinan Varun, he... he had an experience while grab jumping. He made contact with an immortal being beyond time and space, beyond our universe. The Great Serpent told Jinan Varun that our universe is his dominion. And while he has been away for millennia, he will return soon. And when he does, we must be prepared. My people have worked to that end for many years now, and it has caused conflict with the rest of the settled systems. They're always returning soon, the, the figureheads of these cults, right? It's, it's, it's not somebody who's actually there. It's someone who'll be there. We're coming in 1988. 
Oh, not not 1988. We're coming in 1989. No, sorry, the prophet got it wrong. It's uh, it's 1993. That's right. I just read the stars wrong. Uh, but but he's coming. He'll be there. We could say, explain to me how this makes any sense. So you're a member of that cult, where I thought House Faroon has had vanished. Or if that were coming from anywhere anyone else, I'd think it was a joke. Let's say I thought House Varun had vanished. They have retreated from open relations with the United Colonies and the Freestar Collective, but they still exist. I was born in the great city of Dazra and raised with the teachings of Jinan Varun. Wow. I underwent the rite of Krijar when I came of age. I am of the promised. Those who know the truth of the Great Serpent and his inevitable return. Oh dear. I've got it. Of course she's a cultist. <laughs> oh, and here I thought she was going to be my space waifu. But no. No, she's a... She's a crazy. <clears throat> um, I hope this isn't one of those now I have to kill you scenarios. <laughs> I don't care about your past, or that sounds really impressive, or I can't believe you didn't tell me this until now. Um, <laughs> I understand why she didn't tell me about this until now. I mean, I'm having the reaction she probably wouldn't have wanted. I'm having that right now. Uh, but it's also not impressive. Was there more? I'm working on it. I'm going through your dialogue options. Uh, let's see what she says. If we choose the, I hope this isn't one of those now I have to kill you scenarios. Your ability to find the humor in a situation is remarkable. No, I will not kill you for knowing, but you must understand that this is privileged information. Several years ago, I intercepted requests from Constellation to access Varun's space, speaking only of exploration. I was sent to infiltrate Constellation, huh? posing as a former smuggler looking for a new purpose in life. Wow. I guess the question I have now is, do the rest of Constellation know this? Or has she been putting up this whole facade the entire time until now? I always wanted to meet a spy, we could say, or I thought there was more to you than you let on. That makes you an undercover agent. So you lied! <laughs> Let's try this. I thought there was more to you than you let on. Yes, well, you were not the only one. Several weeks after I arrived, I attempted to access secure records within Constellation's archives. Vladimir and Sarah were waiting for me. Okay, so they all know. You're still here, so it couldn't have been that bad. They weren't as gullible as you'd hoped. That must have been a surprise. They didn't trust you. Seems like a good call on their part. Or we could pass a stealth check to say if it were me, I wouldn't have been caught. This is smarmy and immature. Let's just try, you're still here, so it couldn't have been that bad. I had no idea what to think. I was horrified. My failure would be reported to the High Council, and the penalty would be severe. I see. So by being caught, she risked banishment, or something worse back with House Varun. What information are you sending to House Varun? The history of Constellation, where expeditions are sent, data on star systems House Varun has not explored, some information on their members and goals. As you have seen, there is relatively little that would be considered classified. So we've got a number of options here, but the one that I'm concerned about is this one. House Varun knows about the artifacts, then. They do not. I have, for now, kept that information to myself. Okay. You and I have spent so much time together. 
it has been increasingly difficult to keep this from you. And I am sorry for that. Telling you this violates so many of the orders I was given. But it was the right thing to do. I can feel that. Wade Speakerman gifted five Oxhorn memberships to the community. Thank you, Wade. And congratulations to Richard Johansson, Jan C., Kevin Johnson, Sean Swang, Hitomi, and Hitomi Salazar. Thanks again, Wade, and congratulations all. You're still just Andresia, as far as I'm concerned. You didn't trust me with any of this, and that's hard to accept. Or well, this is a lot to absorb. Let's go with you're still just Andresia, as far as I'm concerned. You have no idea what a relief that is. Thank you for trusting me. Okay. The well. Office of Acting Governor Woodard would like to remind all Sidonia citizens to do their part to keep Sidonia clean. Wait a minute, Acting Governor Woodard? Look, I told you everything I know. Adler's your man. So why? Did the governor get ousted? Keep a lookout. Notify us if you see any. Yeah! It's a shame. I liked Hurst. He was good for the people. But I can't abide by his transgressions. Well, look at that. Our quest paid off. We removed the corrupt governor. So you're the acting governor now. That's right. As the highest ranking officer on this planet, it was only fitting that I be appointed to the position in the interim. I know you had a hand in uncovering Hearst's scandal. Rest assured, I'm not like Hearst. I won't make the same lapses in judgment he did. I'm sworn to my duty to serve the people of Mars, and I'll keep with it until someone tells me otherwise, or I'm six feet under. Whichever comes first. Good man. What do you think about the Terramorph Management Division? Time will tell. They're using the Red Devil's HQ, and many of the same people are involved. I can see why some people are saying the Red Devils are back, but that's not the whole story. The new initiative's in its infancy, and while the goal is different than the old Red Devil program, I'm optimistic. I'm ready to see how this plays out. Right. It's with some certain comfort that I know the best and brightest minds are tasked with finding and eliminating the Terramorph threat. Well, that's a wonderful positive resolution to that side quest. Bye for now. Oh, he has, doesn't have any more whiskey. <laughs> right, we gotta go to the bar. Talk to this Crimson Fleet guy. The new equipment is great. I finally feel like I'm working at full speed. Alder Kemp. Unless you're here to serve me another drink, you can turn around and walk away. All right, all right, I'll go. We could say, I heard you might be able to help me move some cargo. Or we could give a sample immediately. Let's try this one. Oh, yeah? Well, I don't know who the hell you are. So what makes you think I'm going to help you out? Now we can give a sample and say, Saurise, or Saurise Bowden said you could help me move some of this. Hey, why don't you say that a little louder? I don't think every single UC guard in Sedonia heard you. <laughs> uh, okay. Okay. Yeah, I think we can help you with this. If you've got a whole shipment of this stuff, you're going to need to move it fast. But you're going to have to do something for us first. <laughs> I'm sorry, but is is he German? <laughs> Did they make this really evil villain Crimson Fleet guy German? <laughs> you're with the Crimson Fleet, right? Pipe down! <laughs> what the hell's the matter with you? You want to get us both thrown into lockup? Look, I don't know what that big mouth Searsha told you, but I keep who I run with a secret in public, and I suggest you do the same. Now, <laughs> do you want my help moving your product, or not? Schnell! Okay, who's we and us? I thought I was dealing with you. 
You're a clever one, aren't you? Let's just say I have a certain influential affiliation. And leave it at that. Basically, you want that Aurora moved? I'm your guy. This is getting old. Might be time no problem. To right down to business. And no small talk. I like it. I see no good reason why we should have any extra dealings with the likes of you. Lady, if you want me to move that shipment for your pal here, you're going to do whatever the hell I want. You got that? Now listen up, because I'm not going to repeat myself. I need you to deal with a miner who's racked up a bunch of debt. He probably spent it all on booze, not that I blame him. Either way, I want that money back. Either way, I want... <laughs> this is so great. <laughs> okay, um... How loud do you want this to be? What do I need to do here? Write you an instruction manual? You can do this loud. You can do this quiet. I don't care. I just want my goddamn money, and I want this guy to remember who he screwed over. I'll just kill him and take the money off his corpse. I'll just pay his debt off right now so we can get down to business. Or, all right, I'll get it done. I mean, I could pay his debt off now, and I might want to choose this option later, but I want to see if there's any dialogue option we can there's get with him money. first. Also, it may be better there's if he thinks the money is coming from the other guy instead of me, even if ultimately I am the one paying it, just that I don't come off as being a softy. So we'll choose, alright, I'll get it done. Perfect. His name's Carl Fielding. I think you'll find him wandering around the Deimos Miners quarters. Don't worry, you can't miss him. Just look for the most miserable looking guy in the entire place. Okay, recover Carl Fielding's debt. Eva, need up evidence. Eva, sit down, have a drink. So, smooth jump into the soul system? You see security hassle you? Cut the crap, Adlin. Let's make this quick. There's only so long I can stand a stink of minor sweat and stale beer. Okay, okay. Take it easy. Here's the fleet kickback, just like I promised. What is this bullshit? This is half. Half of what you promised. No reason to get upset, sweetie. Security around Sidonia's been cracking down, and it's tough to get the demo smocks to play ball. That means I'm spending big on bribes, covering lost shipments. This isn't exactly like running a pharmacy out here, you know. Two things, Adler. And I will make this simple enough so even a total imbecile like yourself can understand. One, I don't give a damn about your excuses. You owe us the agreed amount on time every month. And two, you call me sweetie ever again. And I'll shove my knife so far up your ass that people will mistake you for a unicorn. I, uh, okay. Sorry, neighbor. I'll make it work. <laughs> Here's the rest. That's more like it. I'll see you in a month. <clears throat> we just found some evidence. And do I recognize that voice from somewhere? Have we met this Neva Mora elsewhere? Burden of proof. What now? Return evidence to Lieutenant Toft. All right. Well, well. <clears throat> so, the mining quarters. Uh, they're up here for level, for forever, aren't they? <laughs> Good spot for a space frog. Post drawing? I already did. Sidonia's not so bad. Honest work. I think this is the first time we've seen a really tubby guy like me. Nice outfit. That. Wow. This dude looks like an ambassador. Mars isn't for everybody. Okay. Well, he certainly looks miserable. Carl Fielding. Something I can help you with? 
Grant Haber says, hey, Ox, this quest line is fun to do. I got it done last week, so I know how the, how it ends. Have fun time. Uh, have a fun time taking down the Crimson Fleet. Big score at the end. Thank you, Grant Haber. I can't wait. President 99 says, this is an Indiana Jones quasi accent. And why are we always the bad guys? <laughs> Just waiting for the Wilhelm scream next. <laughs> I don't even know. It's like a Hollywood trope. <laughs> all right. All right. So we can say, nope, sorry. Thought you were someone else. Adler Kemp sent me to teach you a lesson. Or I'm here to collect the credits you owe to Adler Kemp. Adler Kemp? Who the heck is that? Oh, some questions. Do you owe money to anyone or not? <clears throat> of course I owe money. Unless you're independently wealthy. Everyone's in debt nowadays. I owe Deimos. I owe my landlord. I owe Galbank. Heck, I have a tab at Parsec Deep at Sespear. It's an endless list. So why don't you just leave me here? Let me get drunk and find someone else to bother. Okay? <clears throat> I really don't have time to play games, or Adler is serious about this debt, so I suggest you pay quickly. Adler, you said? Uh, nope. I think you have me mixed up with someone else. <laughs> uh, <laughs> look, Check. I'm tired. It's been a long day in the mines. I just want to go home, wash off the dust, and relax. This has been fun, though. Whatever. Hmm. We could say, well, it's been nice knowing you. I'm sure your funeral will be lovely, or I'll go back and tell Adler you said that. Let's try that. Adler, uh, Adler, Adler. Oh, wait, you mean that Adler? Yeah, sorry. I thought you were talking about someone else. <laughs> I told him I'd pay up next week when Deimos cuts our next profit share check. I'll even bring it to him personally. Hmm? Sound good? Yeah? Mm. Pay now or Deimos will be sending your cor corpse home in a casket. Or I don't think Adler is going to be satisfied with that option. Or that's not good enough. Let's try number two. Uh, well, I mean, he doesn't really have a choice. Look, I haven't got a single credit to spare right now, okay? You can't squeeze blood from a stone. You know? Right? Clearly this man has never seen how hard I can squeeze. Andresia! What was I saying earlier about a space waifu? Uh, why are you hurting so badly for credits? <sighs> I'm a miner for Deimos. It's not what I was hoping for out of life. But here I am. Yeah, it's a lousy company. It pays me a salary. But I depend on the profit-sharing bonuses to keep food on the table for my family. Alder thinks you spent all the money on booze. Hey, 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 now wait a second. Just because things are tough, and I might be spending my afternoons at the spear, it doesn't mean I don't care about my family. Adler doesn't get to judge me. No, he's just a low-life pirate who thinks he can push everyone around. We could attack. We could try to pass a persuade check. Or we could say, promise to stop borrowing from Adler and I'll pay the debt for you 3,000 credits. Hey, if I can get away without harming this family man slash drunk and blowing my cover, 3,000 credits is a small price to pay. Holy crap. Really? Y you do that for me? Wow. Uh, I don't even know what to say. Thank you. For everything. And don't worry, I'll never borrow anything from Adler again. I promise. Hello. Okay, and Andresia liked that. The city of Sidonia is proud to be a pillar of support for the United Colonies. Seek your Most local visitors can't wait to get off this rock. Up for military service. <coughs> 
<clears throat> Eric Sand says, if you passed the persuade check, you wouldn't have hurt him. Not physically, but monetarily. If I passed the persuade check, I would have convinced him to sacrifice spending money elsewhere, like on his family's needs, and instead spending money on a pirate. I'd rather he spend his money on his own personal needs, even if they include booze, than giving money to the pirate. I'm going to be getting all of my money back in spades once I bust the Crimson Fleet. Plus, I got some affinity with Andresia. And I think it's a net win for me. An unknown vessel has been identified. Eric Sand says it's his damn fault for being in debt. Eric, I mean, yes, he made a poor choice to work with the pirate, but uh, have you never been in debt? Like it sucks being in debt. And sometimes if you're impoverished, borrowing money from someone else just to make ends meet is your only option. Sometimes predatory lenders prey upon the poor knowing that the poor can never pay them back in order to do them harm, in order to get more out of them, in order to lock them into a poverty cycle. So yeah, he made a poor choice, but I mean, ultimately he was preyed upon by the pirates. Work in the deep mines. That's where you make the big books. Have something for me? Yeah. We could say, uh, yes, it's all here and pay the 3,000 credits. There, would you look at that. I knew that bum was holding out on me. He going to be a problem anymore? Or did he get the message? Oh, he got the message, I guess. Nice, nice. You're kind of a natural at this. Leaning on deadbeats comes easy to you. I like that. <laughs> you know, if you like this kind of work, I can get you more. A lot more. You think you can handle running with my, uh, associates? Hmm. <laughs> we could say, who exactly are your associates? Hmm. If you haven't figured that out by now, then maybe you aren't cut out for our line of work. I don't know, maybe, or yeah, I'm interested, or if you think they can handle me. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. I like your style. All right, I'll call ahead and get a hold of Neva Mora. She's second to the big boss himself. Head out to Europa. You'll find her there. I suggest you listen to whatever she has to say. Oh, and I've taken care of that Aurora shipment for you, too. Don't spend all that cash in one place. Yes. Hey, and I got 9,300. All right. Okay, so now we get to finally meet this Nivera Mora. Rendezvous with the Astrera at Sidonia Europa. Sidonia can have a depressing effect on some people. Make sure to get yourself home. Rook meets King. Random Fandom says, I don't know, but if I was in poverty, I wouldn't make deals with pirates. That's kind of an obvious red flag, or in this case, a black flag. But yeah, Random, I think the point is that he didn't have a choice. There comes a point when you're in such poverty and in so much debt that reputable lenders will no longer work with you. Banks and insurance companies and that sort of thing. And, and you, you get to a point where you're left going to pawnbrokers and criminal organizations to make ends meet. And we don't know enough about this guy. Maybe he wasn't at that point yet, but maybe he was. <clears throat> at any rate, we got our money back by completing the quest times three. We got 9,000. Comp 
compared to the 3,000 that we spent. Any adventure you can fly away from. Is, is that how the saying goes? Tony J says Ox never got this weird about German accents during Wolfenstein or with the German loan shark in Red Dead 2, lol. Well, I mean, with Wolfenstein, it's expected. <laughs> I mean, you're, you're, it's set in a universe where Nazi Germany won World War II. So yeah, all the Nazis have German accents, of course. But in Red Dead, I actually never made that connection. I, uh, Hi, how's it going? I'm just now realizing that he was German. Okay, time to go to Europa. Ms. Cordelia Chesterfield says, don't forget to report back to Sysdef on your findings. Should I do that now or should I do it all in one big swoop? Am I gonna unlock more dialogue if I go back after each piece of evidence that I find? Or should I just turn it all in at once? Chad is saying report back to Sysdef. Okay. Cockpit's in good shape. We're ready to fly. Kara on Facebook says, Hi, Ox. I'm almost caught up with the live streams. I've been listening at work. Apogee kick complete. Orbit steady. Thank you, Kara. Enjoy the show. And I uh, hope it helps you get through your work day. Danny on Facebook says, Lol, I'm in the same mission right now. I hope I can get some ideas. Well, I hope I can give you some ideas. Just, I hope I can make some mistakes so that you don't make the same mistakes I do. Phobos, let's travel to Phobos. Mark Farg uh, Fogarty says it has to be after each mission to get the best ending. I see. Hail acknowledged. You're clear to dock at docking port one. The commander will be waiting for you in operations. Nice clean dock, Captain. Careful you do not track mud on the floors. You would not wish to tarnish this hospitable environment. Yeah, they, they already talked to me about tracking mud on the floors. I'm, I'm gonna be careful. Gotta be neat and tidy. Our friend is gone. I wonder where he went. See all that chest candy on Commander Ikande? That means he's seen some shit. Chest candy? Drank too much coffee last night. I need to swap shifts. You have permission to speak freely. What's the primary objective of Sistaff? Our directive is simple. We are tasked with the eradication of space piracy in the settled systems. As the chief source of pirate activity, the Crimson Fleet is our primary target. Okay, that's it for him. As you were. So I need to talk to her. Most of our operations team graduated top of the their class. The commander appreciates academy. the sacrifice you made. there's fleet out there, Going we'll find undercover. Why hold prisoners aboard the Vigilance when you could send them directly to prison? Two reasons. First, Commander Akande's playing this operation extremely close to the vest. That means keeping prisoners under his own roof until this is resolved. Second, this is an undercover mission. For our safety and yours, we need to keep these prisoners out of the spotlight. I have evidence for you. Excellent. Let me have it, and I'll upload it to our database. I've discovered some information about Adler Kemp. Interesting. Looks like he's been meeting up regularly with Neva Mora to transfer goods and cash from Sidonia. Which means the Crimson Fleet's just lost one of their drop points. <laughs> that should set them back a bit. Find anything else? That's all I have for now. Understood. Keep searching and you're bound to find more. All right. Let me know if you need anything else. <clears throat> I wonder how quickly they are to pick up um, Adler Kemp. Are we gonna find him in the brig now? I'm gonna laugh if we find him in the brig now.
Lieutenant Toft is as organized as they come. You can be sure she'll keep up to this spot. Hey. Hey, no funny stuff with that boost pack. Got enough flight traffic as it is. Nope. Not yet. I'd be surprised if they had him already. I mean, I just turned the evidence in. Maybe after I complete the Naiva Mora part, then they'll go and pick him up. This is the brig. We keep prisoners here for interrogation. Oh my gosh. Why well, you guys gotta stand in my way? Or Orchid Lake says, uh, or Orchard Lake says, this questline wrecked my affinity with Andresia. Oh no. Yeah. So far, it's only done positive things for my affinity with Andresia. Let's hope I make the right decisions to keep that, to keep it that way. Free and clear for flight. Okay, we're going to Europa. So that's gonna be way over here. The Astrea. Didn't I already prove myself? Or Adler said that? I didn't know he cared. Damn right I am, or that's what I'm here for. Let's say, Adler said that? I didn't know he cared. <laughs> You're funny. I hate funny. Remember that. <laughs> so, okay. before I put you to work, let's get everything out in the open. I don't know if Adler mentioned it, and for his sake, I hope he hasn't. But you aren't about to sign up with any average pirate crew. You're signing up with the Crimson Fleet. That's if you get through this little task I have planned for you. There's a medical supply ship called the Raigana, jumping into Enceladus's orbit. On board that ship, you'll find a traitor named Austin Rake. I want him dead. Murder! <sighs> Great. A medical supply ship? Why not a ship with some actual loot? This job isn't about the loot. But I suppose every dog needs its scraps. Keep whatever worthless junk is on that ship. Just remember, the only thing that matters is that Rake dies. I wonder if I can get him into, like, witness protection or something like that. Why not hunt Austin Rake yourself? There's a lesson in this. I need you to learn what'll happen if you decide to turn your back on the fleet. Consider it your glimpse into a possible unfortunate future. So you'd better pay close attention. What options do I have to complete this job? Kill Rake? That's your only option? If you want my advice, there's only one way to guarantee he dies. Turn the Ragana into space junk. Only way to be sure. Consider it done. It's done when Rake stops breathing. Head back here when you're finished. And don't keep me waiting for long. This Neva Mora, her words are measured and carry weight. She is not to be trifled with. Okay, thank you, Andresia. <clears throat> How can you be certain that Austin Rake is on the Ragana? I've been tracking Rake for months. He's making it tough, not gonna lie. 
He changes his location and identity so often, it's costing me a small fortune just to keep tabs. But you know what? It's worth every damn cred. He's made me look like a fool in front of Delgado, and I'm gonna have his head on a pike. Why do you want Austin Rake dead? Rake used to run with the fleet. Hell, I'm the one who vouched for him in the first place. Back then he had a different name and a different identity. He was a damn good earner too, brought in a ton of creds. Everything was fine until he wanted out. So he ran. And nobody, I mean nobody, runs away from the fleet. Right. Well, I have a feeling that this is going to be tricky. I'm going to do a hard save now. We need to go to Callisto. and they are offline. Okay, so that wasn't part of the quest, that was a random encounter. Those were ecliptic mercenaries, not the Crimson Fleet. Uh, uh, repair parts, please. Transferring parts now. Thanks again. Okay. Oh, that's right. My ship is full. Okay, well, I can't loot. Is it on the surface? No, it's a ship, right? So it's... How did I... Why did I go to Callisto? I targeted what I thought was the quest marker, but I guess it was... No, I need to go to en Enceladus. That's right, it's Enceladus. All right, set course. Convince the Ragana to kill Austin Rake, or find a way, and then it flew off the screen. We can attack! The only place you're headed for is an early grave. Looks like trouble found you. You've drawn the attention of the Crimson Fleet. You have a crewman on board I'm looking for, then boy do I have some bad news for you. <laughs> uh, Alright, my goal, and I don't even know if it's possible, but my goal is to somehow get this guy into protective custody. So the question is, do the, do the crew of the Regana know that they have somebody on board? Benji Lad with a super tip. Thank you so much, Benji Lad. That is wanted by the Crimson Fleet. 
Before we mention the Crimson Fleet and start spooking him, let's say you have a crewman on board that I'm looking for. All right. And what are your intentions with this crewman? All right, lots of options. At, we could attack and say wrong answer. Tell Austin Rake this is all his fault. I only have one demand. Kill Austin Rake. Do that and I'll let you go. We can pass a Crimson Fleet check to say he's. here's what's going to happen. You're going to open your hatch and I'm going to board. Or we can pass a UC Sys Def check to say the fleet wants Austin Rake dead. I'd like to board your ship and talk to him. Talk about how to spare him. That's what I want. Well, normally I would say no, but frankly, it will be safer for us that way. All right, you can dock. We will talk then. Right. Sarah, no, 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 why, 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 back, 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 back. Oh my God, just in time. <laughs> I almost crashed right into it. Sarah Morgan liked that option. We have a clean dock, right on the money. Hi. The interior of this ship comforting. She likes the interior of every ship. Talk to Dimitri. Right. Quick save. Howdy there, everybody. I am not sure what to make of you being here. If you wanted to kill us, you could have done that from your ship. If you wanted our cargo, we could have jettisoned it. I guess I should just stop talking and let you say your piece. We can attack! Here's what's going to happen! You're gonna die, and I'm gonna enjoy it. Just tell me which one of you is Austin Rake. I wanted to make sure there wasn't any real loot on board. Well, I don't know who's listening over comms. This is safer. That is true. Which means you don't want somebody to know what you are really up to. Now, do you mind telling us what this is all about? We can attack, we can... Say, why risk your lives to protect Rake? I will not murder a man in cold blood. You will have to kill us all first. Uh, yeah, Dimitri is Rake. We could pass a persuade check. Austin Rake is a Crimson Fleet pirate. Kill him and I let you go. Or we can pass a UC Sis Def check to say the fleet wants Rake dead. But I want to resolve this without violence. You really do not know which one of us is Rake, do you? And you do not seem to care either, which makes me think you really want to save him. Okay, I have idea. We can strike his name from Manifest, make it so he was never on board. Then, when we dock, we will leave him on this ship and deliver him to another port. Um... <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I like that. We could say the fleet won't buy that. Someone may need to die after all. We can say, deliver him to Sistaff. If the fleet finds out about this deal, we're both exposed, exposed, as long as he agrees to turn himself into UC Sistaff. I want to deliver him to Sistaff. But I don't see this option. I'll try to. That is fair. We do not want any part of the fleet. Is that all right with you, Austin? Do I have a choice? Oh, so that was It good. does not appear you do. Well then, it is agreed. You go back to your ship and we will make sure Rake was never on ours. And in case any of your handlers get suspicious, here. We had an extra crate of supplies loaded, in case one got damaged. This should be proof you were not here to bargain. Okay, well that's good. Well, uh, you guys, those are the medical supplies. Return to Na uh, Neva in Europa's orbit. My, I guess my only concern is that if they were tracking him and they found a way to figure out that he was here, how are they not going to notice that these guys beeline straight to a UC Sysdef ship to transfer him? I thought we were dead. I 
can't believe it. All right, well, we Thank you for letting us go. You're welcome. This unpleasantness aside, the people of New Homestead will be grateful for these supplies. So uh, now what? They're going to put me in a cis-deaf prison? I'm not saying it's worse than death, but it's pretty damn close. Thank if you ever get you to the key, you go. better sleep with one eye open and two pistols loaded. The key, huh? Be careful around the fleet. They talk about family, but it's just a bunch of crap. Is that a Fallout 76 we reference? I can't believe it. <laughs> because the, the Raiders in Fallout 76 are always talking about family, and it's always a load of crap. Is that a Fallout 76 this reference? This unpleasantness aside, the people of New Homestead will be grateful for these supplies. Well, I mean, I wish I could so go the in there and loot. Huh? Computer is inaccessible now. We will make sure Rake's name is taken off the manifest. And I hope you do not take this the wrong way, but uh, I hope our paths never cross again. That's it. Okay. This unpleasantness aside, the people of New Homestead will be grateful for it. Well, that was quick and painless. Didn't even have to pass a persuasion check. We've detached. Let's get out of here. The pirates talk a lot about family, but it's all a load of crap. <laughs> I wish I had that quote when I was doing my Wastelander series from Fallout 76. I've got something with your name on the just don't boss. know how to take a hit. Hey, Rook, wanna help me with some target practice? Fend off the ecliptic fighters and hail the Astrea. All right, so we just helped the Crimson Fleet against the ecliptic. And that should definitely put us into their good graces. And we didn't accidentally fire upon the Crimson Fleet. Thanks for the help with the ecliptic. I had it under control, but it definitely went faster after you jumped into the fight. Ah. Now tell me about the Ragana. Give me some good news, then we can go celebrate. See if they buy this. Uh, who exactly is the ecliptic? Mercenaries. Guns for hire that shoot their own parents if they were paid enough. I'll tell you. We do a hell of a lot of dirty work in the Crimson Fleet. But we'd never sell away our souls like an ecliptic merc does. Now, there's always someone worse, isn't there? Why were you attacked by ecliptic? You know what? I have no idea, and it's frustrating the hell out of me. I suppose I could have pissed off someone I screwed over in the past, but there's been so many, I've lost count. Bobby says, Ox, power your weapons. No point having it unassigned. Yes, you're right. I just forgot about that. I was getting through the battle. All right, uh, we could say, actually, I ran into some complications, or we could lie and say Austin Rake is dead. The Regana survived. No kidding. That'll make Delgado happy, seeing as our hands are clean. I would have preferred if you hadn't left witnesses behind, but at least you got the job done. Anyway, you wanted into the Crimson Fleet? Well, you're in. Yep, it's that simple. Hope this business with Rakes taught you something. Because I'm about to stick my neck out and vouch for you. If you screw up, and I wind up looking like an asshole, I'm gonna send someone after you. We clear? I don't respond well to threats or best decision you ever made or it's about damn time. Let's say best decision you ever made. Yeah? Last person who said that was Rake. 
so you've already dug yourself a hole about six feet deep. And now that you know the deal, it's time to see what you signed up for. I'm gonna upload the coordinates for our headquarters in the Crick system. Spacers call it the key, the fleet calls it home. Head out there as soon as you can. Don't keep me waiting long. Joining the Crimson Fleet is hardly a cause for celebration. But you have your reasons. So for now, I will allow it. Okay, Andrea. I mean, you do realize I'm going undercover. Andrea, chill out, all right? All right, I'm going to power my weapons while I'm thinking about it. Not too shabby. Let's do a quick save. And to the key. Why are we going back to Phobos? To check in. It's a beautiful ship. It's just so gorgeous. Looks good. It's good to be back in our own ship. Commander Ikande wants to see you. We're not Follow in our me. ship. Why do the every companion thinks that every time we board a ship, it's ours? I had a but friend on the Mercana. It's not. I hope I'll be able to see him next time we're on shore leave. Oh well, I'm glad I didn't blow it up. He just said that he had a friend on the Raganda, <laughs> and Excuse we didn't me. blow it up. So, so far, so good. This is the point in the quest where they would have chastised us for blowing up a ship filled with innocence. If we had, but we didn't. Howdy. At ease, soldier. We got the message from the Ragana about Austin Rick. We had him dropped off at a separate port, off the books. Suffice to say, he's got a lot to answer for. Lots of options. Um, any point in trying to get Rake to give up information about the fleet? That's something we're looking into. But it doesn't seem like he knows much. He might be better served as bait. Well, he's supposed to be dead. For now, we'll keep him in the brick. Perhaps you could pay him a visit there sometime? I'm sure he'd be pleased to see you. I risked my cover to do it, so you better appreciate it. I would have been fine killing Rake myself, but I didn't want to traumatize the crew, or I'm glad he surrendered. I didn't want to kill anyone, innocent or otherwise. That's a smart line to follow. Part of this role you're playing means having to make hard choices. Just remember not to lose yourself in the part. We did our best not to cross the line, but the more we do, the more we risk exposing the deception. Oh, one more thing before we move on. For transparency's sake, you should know we were the ones that hired Ecliptic to attack Neva's ship. What? There was concern after what happened with the Regana that you might have trouble earning Neva's trust. Coming to her rescue ensured that would not be a problem. What? <laughs> the UC hired a bunch of Ecliptic mercenaries. What? Okay. The Ecliptic doesn't have a problem with attacking the Crimson Fleet? They are mercenaries for hire. If they are paid enough money, Ecliptic would attack the Vigilance. It wasn't terribly difficult to convince them to attack an isolated Crimson Fleet ship. Just expensive. Michael Findlay says, two muffins in an oven. The first muffin says, phew, it's hot in here. The second muffin says, ah, a talking muffin. Michael, the second muffin is also talking. He wouldn't be surprised that a muffin is talking if he himself has the ability to talk as a talking muffin. I'm sorry, the joke isn't working. It's, it's, okay, thank you very much, Michael Findlay. We could say, I could have died out there. 
Or that was a clever way to ensure a neighbor's trust. Or that was a risky move. That was a risky move. But a gamble that hopefully paid off. On that note, how did things go with Neva? Were you able to join the fleet? <clears throat> it's a miracle that whole thing that the whole thing worked. Or it was a clever plan. The fleet doesn't suspect a thing. Or it does seem like I passed their initial test. Then it worked. You're in. Sounds like everything is going as expected. Now it's time for the next phase of the mission. Our intel on Sears show was correct. After we received reports on your interaction with Adler Kemp, we picked up on your rendezvous with Neva Mora. Our files indicate she's second in command, so getting on a good side will ensure you get into the Crimson Fleet. What do you know about Neva? The woman has a record that could stretch across Sol and back. She started young as one of Neon Street Rats and worked her way up to second in command. She's a force to be reckoned with, so don't underestimate her. If she's a Neon Street Rat, then perhaps I can pass a number of Neon Street Rat checks with her to ingratiate myself with her. We could say those idiots don't suspect a thing. I don't know that yet, so we could say everything's going according to plan, as far as I know so far. Yes, you pass your first test and you're still alive. But before we get too confident, that either means she suspects nothing, or she intends to make an example of you later. Just remember, these are ruthless criminals, so don't let your guard down. And their ruthlessness is only surpassed by their cunning. You should proceed with caution, regardless of how well you think you've ingratiated yourself. So what's next for you on Neva's agenda? We could lie and say Neva wanted to meet near Europa. We could say, shouldn't I get off the Vigilance before my cover is blown? The Vigilance is equipped with one of the most advanced intelligence suites in the UC fleet. Nothing slips through. You can rest assured, if the Crimson Fleet had any access to our whereabouts or have infiltrated our security, we'd know. As long as you're here, your identity is safe. Then we can say I got coordinates to the Crimson Fleet base, or I was told to meet Neva at the Key. Let's try this one. Excellent. If you're heading to the Key, I assume you'll be meeting Delgado soon. Delgado is the leader of the Crimson Fleet. I have a profile here with some information on his background. You'll want to know the individual cadences of every member of the fleet, but Delgado's most of all. What is there to know? He is pirate scum, like all of them. Exactly. The Crimson Fleet is not a monolith. Any information you have on its members can only help. In any case, now that you're with the fleet, you'll be operating independently. We will shadow you eventually, but we'll need to maintain our distance for now especially while you're on the key. This will also give us time to bolster our defenses, should we need to engage with the fleet in the future. Sir, on that note, shall we begin implementing the upgrade to our shields? Immediately, Lieutenant. Notify the engineers and relay the information to the crew. I hope your entry into the fleet has overcome any doubts you may have had regarding your mission. It certainly increased my estimates on success. Keep up the good work. We'll expect further reports. Dismissed. Okay, travel to the key, and I don't believe I have any further evidence for her. Things are progressing rather quickly. I'm sure the commander is pleased. We don't have a full map of the fleet's roster. The members change too quickly. But we can have further conversations with her. How's the training coming along? Training. We can say you mentioned the Vigilance is upgrading its shielding. That's right. It's something we've requested a while ago, in preparation for a future conflict with the fleet. Once we finalize everything and run a few tests, we'll have the defenses needed for a jump to the Crick system when the time comes. Do you have any detailed information about the Crimson Fleet? Sure. We have a database of profiles you can read, which should help you ingratiate yourself with the group. However, the profiles are a guide, not gospel. Use what you can, fill in the blanks, and play off that. I imagine when you're done, You'll be able to generate far more accurate profiles than what we have in our system. <clears throat> Why is it called the Crix system? The system was originally called Alpha Ophiuchi, until a flag was planted there by Jasper Crix, the founder of the Crimson Fleet. 
Since it was crucial that space travelers avoided that system, navigators marked it as Cricks on star maps as a warning. They could have just as easily labeled it Crimson Fleet, so I'm guessing the pirates themselves were responsible for spreading their leader's name. Over the years, people forgot the system's original designation and started calling it the Crick system. It's been that way ever since. Okay. Good luck on the key. Well, we've got some profiles we need to read, and this is going to be important for having dialogue options with them in the future. Crimson Fleet Profile, Adler Kemp. I mean, they should have given this to me earlier when I was actually talking with him. Adler Kemp, age 45, personality, hot-headed, competent, and seasoned. Adler is a Crimson Fleet ship captain operating out of Sidonia. His hot-headed nature means Adler is easily provoked, which has gotten him into numerous scrapes. Despite this flaw, Adler is a seasoned ship captain, and in most cases, he can use his battle prowess to escape sticky situations. Addendum. As more information on Crimson Fleet captains is gathered, additional profiles will be added to Commander Ikonde's office terminal. Profile Delgado. Age 44. Personality clever, shrewd, careful, calculating. Originally hailing from Aquila City, Delgado fell into crime at a young age, despite being born into wealth. His parents exiled him in hopes of correcting the behavior, yet this only served to increase his criminal behavior, culminating in the theft of a cargo ship which he used to initiate himself into the Crimson Fleet. Delgado is a shrewd, clever leader who isn't prone to rash judgment. He keeps a tight rein on the Crimson Fleet, but he's given his pirates enough latitude to do what they want or to do what they do best. Profile, Neva Mora, age 32. Short-fused, temperamental, intense, incendiary. Neva Mora was born and raised in Neon, an orphan at a young age. She spent most of her youth getting arrested for crimes ranging from simple assault to grand larceny and was a frequent visitor at the Sizdef prison. At 22, she stowed away on a transport to Aquila City was eventually recruited to the Crimson Fleet. Addendum as more information, yada yada, Ikonde's terminal. And we still have the medical supplies. Interesting that we didn't actually need these to convince Neva Mora that um, we destroyed the ship. Possibly since we didn't choose that option. Perhaps we should have chosen that option, if it was an option at all. We got a wager going over whether the fleet would let you in or leave you for dead. And, uh, unless you're a zombie, I owe the ops team lunch. <laughs> Great to know that you bet against me. All right, are there any new terminal entries? No. Right, I got a go question for you. How many pirates does it take to screw a light bulb? No idea. A hundred? One. It only takes one pirate to screw everything. Heard the Ragana made it to port with zero casualties. Nicely done. Ugh! The Vigilance is our flagship. Where it goes, fleet run. Ugh! Why? So bad. To the brig. We hunt piracy all across Man. the galaxy. One, they screw everything. Just, ugh. Well, hello there. Oh, I'm so glad you're here. I swear, this is all just a big misunderstanding. Why would you be happy to see me? Oh, well, I just figured we got along so well back there in Sidonia. You might remember everything that I did for you and return the favor. <laughs> I know you were just doing your job, so I'm not going to hold that against you. I could really use the help. I found solid evidence that you had committed a crime. Me? 
commit a crime? No, you have it all wrong. Do you have any idea how tough it is to earn your way in Sidonia? Either you spend all day in the mines getting your lungs filled with Martian dust, or wear your fingers to the bone working on machinery. All I was trying to do was earn a living. Display a little bit of uh, entrepreneurial spirit. If trying to make a living is considered breaking the law, then lock me up and throw away the key. Yeah, that's what we're doing. Because you weren't just earning a living, you were earning a living by harming others with extortion. Aren't you a member of the Crimson Fleet? Well, yes. But that's only because they forced me into their ranks. You've met Naiva. You know how she is. She, uh, threatened to kill me if I didn't do what she said. Come on. You've got to put in a good word for me. You just going to stand there and stare at me? Anyway, I don't really believe what he's saying because he hesitated there. We could say, even if I agreed with you, there's nothing I could do or cooperate with the authorities and maybe they'll go easy on you or you're not talking your way out of this one, Adler. Let's choose cooperate with the authorities and maybe they'll go easy on you. That's all you're going to say to me? Okay, fine. I'll tell you this, though. The UC can't hold me forever. And when I get out, first thing I'm going to do is hunt you down. Did you ever hear from Carl Fielding? That drunken miner? No. Whatever you said to him must have sunk in because I haven't seen him since you left Sidonia. He's lucky. If he would have stumbled into this spear begging for credits again, I would have... well... Use your imagination. Where did Sizdef arrest you? Right at the broken spear in front of everyone. Any reputation I may have had there is long gone thanks to that little stunt. On top of that, they caught me right in the middle of a... Mm, deal I was closing with some long haulers. I guess I can kiss that money goodbye. I did you a favor putting you in here because Sizdef is taking down the Crimson Fleet. Are you serious? You actually expect me to be grateful? I don't know Sizdef's endgame, but I'd wager that you've bitten off far more than you can chew. No matter what you throw at the fleet, Delgado will find a way out. Well, look at where you are right now. Interrogation complete? Good. Maybe I can get some rest. He won't be coming for you. What about the guy, the other guy, the guy that was on the ship? Is he gonna be in here? No, they relocated him somewhere else. That's what we learned. Okay. Lots of cells to fill. I have a feeling we've got this our work cut the best out the best. Us. Let's see if there are any entries on the terminal. Some. Nothing new. Of the guards don't take kindly to the prisoners, but we should try to maintain some decorum. I wonder if it's possible to blow your cover by being too good, by not engaging in the killing. I might need to do something uh, nasty to maintain my cover. Undocking complete, Captain. Right.
So with burden of proof, I've got simply search for evidence, which I can't track really. So Rook meets King, travel to the key. <coughs> Right, let's see. That's gonna be deep in Crick's space, and the last time I was there, they all shot a shot at me. Oh dear. Well, they're not gonna do that this time because I'm part of the Crimson Fleet, right? Surrounded by the Crimson Fleet. Crosmar became a Silver Ox. Thank you so much, Crosmar. And there's the key. The key acknowledging fleet vessel. Welcome home. Here we are, enemy territory. Joe Zaza says, nice UC armor. My face. You said the take was 10K, but it was 30. Big difference on 40% of 10 versus 30. Andrea, move. You wanted 4K, you got 4K. Not my problem. If you're stealing from me, you bet your ass it's your problem. <laughs> Introductions done. I'm gonna do a hard save here. The voice actor reminds me of uh, Meg from Fallout 76. I wonder if it's the same actor. I mean, I, should I loot the body? The hell took you so long? <laughs> Forget how to grab jump or something? Why? Did you miss me? If I say that, she's gonna get pissed off because she doesn't like humor. We could say job's done and I'm here, so back off. Does she accept toughness? Does she appreciate it? Let's try that. Fair enough. Glad to see you showing some backbone. That's what she likes. Just be careful that you can back up that attitude before you square off with someone who can kick your ass. But all that aside, you made it. So now. You get to hear a nifty history lesson. Yay! Pencils ready? Ready. Good. Lore. This floating scrap heap you're standing on is called the Keep. Used to be an old UC military star station, and now it's the fleet's base of operations. Might look a little beat up on the outside, but we keep it together. The Crimson Fleet took over an entire UC star station? Sure did. Right out from under their noses. Way before you or I were born, though. We've held this station for a very long time. Don't worry. Delgado will tell you all about it. Place looks like a real dump. Looks like a good place for some R&R. &R. I bet it really pisses the UC off that you're stationed here. Let's try that. <laughs> you think? And that's only part of it. I'll let Delgado fill you in on the whole story. He tells it better anyway. But I can give you the short version while we walk the station. Yeah, yeah. It must be very embarrassing for the UC to be in this situation. Anyway, I'll tell you all about the key. <laughs> She's 
like but it's better if I show you too. Follow me. Always worth checking. Never know what you might find in their pockets. So, the key is in orbit around Suvorov. That's the very same ice ball where the United Colonies built a supermax prison they call the Lock. The UC is so lock clever. Lock and key. Supermax and prison. Yeah. Lock, yeah. Key. lock key. Got oh, it. Cute, it's huh? very cute. Love it. Lock and key. Oh. Right. I'll be there in a minute. Uh, pardon me while I collect evidence. SSNN Crick's interview, part one. Hello, everyone. I'm Gail Dunnigan of SSNN, and this is Galact Talk. My guest tonight is one of the most notorious criminals in the settled systems. His ruthlessness and desire for wealth has landed him squarely at the top of the wanted list for every major law enforcement agency in the galaxy. I am, of course, speaking of the self-appointed leader of the Crimson Fleet himself, Jasper Crix. Good evening, Mr. Crix. Good evening, Gail. Thank you for accepting my invitation. Yes, well, being blindfolded and then Grav jumped to what appears to be an abandoned mining facility isn't exactly what I call an invitation. <laughs> well, I'm sure you're not surprised that your request for an interview would come with some very specific conditions. Frankly, I was a bit surprised to receive any type of response at all. Would you mind telling me why you decided to do this interview? Because there comes a time in every pirate's life where they have to make an extremely important decision. Do they take a leap and become one of the most legendary pirates in history? Or do they simply sputter on, subsisting on freighters and deep space privateers? So are we to assume that you are taking the leap? That Jasper Crix is moving on to bigger and better things in his life? That's spot on, Gail. That's exactly why you're here. Interesting. Well then, would you mind sharing with us exactly what your particular leap entails? In due time. There's no rush. In fact, I'd say we have at least 12 hours before the authorities trace this broadcast. Plenty of time to discuss whatever you like. Oh, <laughs> all right then. Perhaps the best place to start this interview would be at the beginning of your career. Please, proceed. Ah, that's only part one. We gotta find the rest. And find evidence while we're at it. Just leaving the body there. I wonder if we track the evidence quest, if it's going to highlight them so that we know where to go to find it. Let's uh, look around first. And then we'll track it to see what happens. Okay, that's it for here. No, <clears throat> they're not tracked. If there's any evidence here, it's not being tracked by the quest. Cargo bay. Now, we've got everything the fleet needs right here. Of course, you've got to pay for it. Remember, on the key, 
Credits are king. What the hell is this? I have. All right, all right. Hang on, Nav. I wish Before to you get pissed, you. I've got my hands full. When you have time. Jasmine, sweetie, I'm trying to give a tour here. So you want to tell me why those damn doors are sealed? It's called a malfunction. You know, that thing I spend most of my day dealing with. Believe me, my people are on it. Have a little faith for once. Aw. And you always, Angel. This here's Jasmine. You need anything for your ship, she's got you covered. We'll hit up the depot next since these doors have given out on us. So anyway, we were talking about the lock. About a hundred years ago, the prisoners down there rioted and took over the place. After stealing some ships, they were actually able to make it up here and took over the key. About time you brought us new blood, Neva. I was getting tired of trading with the same old faces. You're just ticked everyone's getting wise to your ridiculous prices, Aludra. Anyway, welcome to the depot, Rook. Well, you'll be lucky if these blood-sucking leeches don't bleed you completely dry. Whoa, whoa. It's not our fault that people don't appreciate how much it costs to get untraceable merchandise onto the key. Neva's just vining because she thinks she lost a ton of cash selling us a shipment of gear. She should have done her homework. Yeah, sure, laugh it up. I remember that next time I need something from you cheapskates. Let's move on. <clears throat> Back to my story. After the liberated prisoners grabbed the key, they established it as a base of operations and began pirating the spaceways. That was how the Crimson Fleet began. Of course, Jasper Cricks had a lot to do with all that, but uh, we'll get to him later. Rook, meet Zuri, queen of the rare exports. If I don't have it, you don't need it. Neuroamps, blueprints. Hit her up and she'll take care of you. Speaking of which, you still owe me for that last purchase, Neva. It's like five figures. Don't make me collect it the hard way. <laughs> the hard way? Oh no. Rook, protect me from Zuri's vengeance. Enough of the bullshit, Zuri. I'll pay you when I pay you. Deal with it. Got a problem with that? Take it up with the boss. On the right, you've got Radley from the Trade Authority. I'm sure you know the deal there. Ah. He'll buy pretty much anything, no matter how hot. Then we got our med bay on the left, run by the one and only Samina Mizra. She'll patch you up, if you've got the money. We don't run any free clinics up in here, you don't? Okay, this is our final stop. Over there, you've got the last Nova, where Bog serves watered-down drinks at ridiculously exorbitant prices. And right here is the most important place on the entire station. The Reckoner's Core, run by the incomparable Shinya Voss. Another new Rook, Neva? I can't believe Delgado still lets you recruit, given what happened with the last one. Oh! You mean Austin Rake? It's been taken care of, all right? I don't like loose ends, and this Rook is the one who tied it off. Perhaps next time you'll try to be a bit more discerning regarding your choices. It's far more cost-effective. Yeah, yeah, love you too, darling. Anyway, Shinya handles our lifeblood. The money. We call him our Reckoner, but if you ask me, he's actually a pain in the ass. And Neva will slit your throat if she thinks you'll bleed creds. Go to hell, boss. Take care of our new friend here, or I'll find a way to pull the pin on that little party popper in your chest. Anyway, Shinya will get you set up in our system. I've got real work to do. Once you're done, head upstairs and I'll introduce you to the boss. Time for a proper introduction. I am Shinya Voss, the official reckoner for the Crimson Fleet. And since Neva so thoughtfully mentioned it, yes, this is a bomb embedded in my chest. And no, I'll never know the meaning of the word humble. In fact, <laughs> I find Delgado's idea of a security measure to be quite empowering. Wow, uh, how is a bomb in your chest empowering? 
I see the bomb as a symbol of my importance, and it's a constant reminder to everyone of the sacrifice I was willing to make. The freedom I've given up, the pain, it's not something that just anyone has the resolve to bear. He is right. The pain he endures is proof of his loyalty and his resolve. Hmm. Well, we could say he just set me up so I can start making money or that's gonna get infected. <laughs> I'd say that was a bit extreme. Or we can pass a security check to say that's the most clever security measure I've ever seen. Glad you approve. Obviously, betrayal isn't taken lightly around here. Since I oversee the bulk of transactions and maintain all accounts for the fleet, I'm a prime target for information. Should our enemies capture me or I grew any semblance of a moral conscience, you might consider me the greatest threat we have. For Delgado, the bomb grants peace of mind and a certain degree of safety. So one wrong move and you're dead? Essentially, but I sleep soundly knowing I'm one of the few that can piss Delgado off and live. Should I die, all of my knowledge, the accounts, the credits, it would be a mess. He wouldn't dare. He holds the trigger, but we all know that my death cripples the fleet. Call the bomb a weapon of last resort. Good to know. I don't think I can make a sacrifice like that. I bet you don't get out much. Or Delgado sounds like a smart man. Let's try that. It's why he's the boss. Of course, I'm not the first Reckoner to bear a bomb under my ribcage, but Delgado was smart enough to continue the tradition. Now, let me get you set up. A moment while I convene with the Corps. Thanks to advanced modifications even Dugin would envy, I can interface directly with our mainframe and the Galbank network. This allows me to move and clean credits faster and more efficiently than any run-of-the-mill cyber runner. So when did this become Cyberpunk there. 2077? You're done. Wow. All you need now is Delgado's blessing, and you'll be one of us. Any other modifications I need to know about? None. Other than my chest and arm modifications, I am but a simple man. Is the interview over now? Can we get back to work? That was easy. It's about time or time to make those credits. The perfect segue into my final subject. Thanks to our relations with contacts across the galaxy, we always have a steady stream of jobs available. I've granted you all the necessary permissions to access these listings at any time using the computers that surround the core. What kind of jobs? Oh, you know, smuggling, piracy, taking things that aren't yours. Nothing that should keep you up at night. Well, depending on your methods. Just tell me we're officially done here, or I'm not interested in small jobs, or sounds like we'll be doing a lot of business together. If Neva's chosen wisely, we certainly will. Now, I believe that covers all I have to say. So you can run along to Delgado. Take the elevator to the upper level. You should be able to find your way from there, I hope. <clears throat> okay. All right, listen up. You can all stop complaining. Atrium to cargo bay doors have been repaired. Oh, and you're welcome, Nev. Yay. Um, all right, Andrea, you had something you wanted to say to me? I'm going to quick save here just in case I say something wrong. It has been a relief to be honest with you about my past. I appreciate your willingness to listen. But talking about this, remembering all those years, has brought back some unsettling memories. Well, I'm glad I brought her with me. I figured we'd have plenty of opportunities to gather some affinity with her. 
Um, we could say I'd like to discuss this, but not right now. Let's talk later. Or you have memories of House of Arun that, are, that aren't unsettling? I'm surprised. We could say I'm starting to wonder if you ever had a day of fun in your life. Or you don't have to talk about it if it's uncomfortable. Or I'm here for you if you need someone to listen. <clears throat> Let's try that. Thank you. That means a great deal to me. I have told you that I spent many years coordinating with smugglers along the edges of the settled systems. There were men and women I worked alongside closely. And over time, I established relationships. They were not of the promised, but I considered them friends. What do you mean, promised? It describes the people of House Varun. We who have been promised to serve the Great Serpent now and forever. In exchange, he promises to care for us when he returns to his domain. <laughs> we could say even us heathens can be worth getting to know. Yes, I have found that to be true. It was, and is, still a surprise. You must understand. I was raised to believe that those who do not follow the Great Serpent do not matter. For they are lost, their fate is fixed and grim. And yet here were these men and women with hopes and dreams, delights and aversions. It felt like a small betrayal of my people, of House Varun, but I cared for my friends. And then I lost them. Her story is becoming more and more fascinating to me. The entire House of Varun faction is creepy and weird, but really interesting. I can't wait to learn more. We could say we've all lost people, it happens, or that must have been terrible, or it's never easy losing a friend. It's not something I have much experience with. It was so sudden. We had met on a remote planet to transfer cargo, and zealots appeared in force. Seemingly out of nowhere. There was barely time to react. So many were cut down immediately. I believe my years of training saved me, got me moving when others faltered. I retreated to my ship immediately. But I left them all behind. Aaron Bascom and Jada Wong. They were my friends and I abandoned them. And in the years since, I have never looked for them. Yikes! <clears throat> yeah, that would eat my conscience as well. You've never checked up on them? No. I told myself it's because I never had the time, but in truth, I was scared of what I'd find. How long has it been? Ten years. I was immediately reassigned to another role, light years away. You're worried that they'll blame you for leaving them, or if they're half as strong as you, they'd have, they'd have gotten by. Let's choose number two. No, maybe. I, I don't know. It all happened so fast, and I've had so much time since then to replay it in my head. Wonder if I should have done things differently. In my time getting to know you, I have thought more and more of all this. How little sense it all made, how I never really knew what happened or what became of my friends. My connection to you has reminded me what it means to trust someone, to be there for them. And I can no longer live with not knowing. I need to finally pursue this. I would like you with me when I do. I do not know what we will find, but I know it will be easier with you at my side. All right, at last we got her affinity quest. We could say, if it will ease your mind, I'm in. Or sure, I've got nothing better to do today. Or we can choose this really inappropriate time to flirt with her and say, I would do anything for you, Andresha. Thank you. That is... <sighs> I'm sorry, I am not used to someone being so considerate on my behalf. I 
I'm not sure where they might be now, but I believe we should begin the search in Aquila City. That is where I last saw Aaron Bascom. All right, Andreja considers me a friend. And uh, something popped up. Divided loyalties. Okay, so that's my new companion mission. Well, I should probably do that after I complete this one. Uh, I need a quick bio break. I'm feeling parched. I'm gonna go get myself some water. Give me two minutes and I'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. Two minutes. It's always two minutes. It's never more than two minutes. Time me. Two minutes.
There we go. Thank you, everyone, for your patience. Ah, uh, just in time. Yes, man decided to show up just as I get back. Of course he does. And how was that? Like I said, two minutes, right? <sighs> okay, where were we? We've got this huge area to explore, as well as all the merchants. And I have a feeling this is going to be rife with evidence. Now, we need to head upstairs to talk to Diego, or whatever his name is, but... If you need credits, hit up the mission boards at the core. They'll wait for us. So let's look around here. You can get work from the boards near the Reckoner's core. Voss will make sure you get paid. Let's get any more information Ready to make those him. credits? If you want to pad that account of yours, the mission boards are the way to do it. Can I get some details on these smuggling jobs? We have contacts throughout the settled systems that require shipments of illegal goods. Smuggling requires a bit of subterfuge since we'll be loading up your ship with contraband. If you want to make that delivery without getting caught, you'll need shielded cargo space to accommodate the goods. How do I get shielded cargo space? Speak to Jazz about that. She'll be more than happy to set you up. What is shielded cargo space? You don't know? Well, you're about to enter a whole new world. Shielded cargo space is a fleet specialty. It's made to fool the UC and Freestar Ranger scanners that are used to detect contraband. I need shielded cargo space to not get caught doing smuggling missions. Got it. Good, because I do hate repeating myself. What can you tell me about piracy missions? I'm constantly scanning for valuable shipments. You'll be given a target ship transport in the system to track them down. Just be sure you have the cargo space to get the goods. How standard are these theft missions? Very. You'll get a location with the target goods. We don't care how you get it, as long as you deliver. You get caught, that's on you. All right, and that's it for him. Be seeing you. Right, we need to talk to Jazz. All right, that's the last Nova bar. We'll check out, on, uh, check out that in a minute. Okay, that's actually pretty good, but it's not legendary, so it's not worth my time. Bunks, gym, that's the elevator that leads up. Range, shooting range. That last job didn't pan out. I need something bigger. Okay, this is the shooting range. And there's the, the fleet is family. Stealing from each other is just what you call a professional courtesy. Yeah. Peak performance five permanently adds five percent to unarmed damage. SSN Crick's interview part two. Yes. Where did your stellar rise to infamy begin? In the streets of New Atlantis. No parents. No godparents. Just a homeless punk kid robbing whoever he could for the credits. Were these violent crimes? Murders? I'm a bit offended you even asked that question, Gail. Sure, a few people here and there walked away with injuries, but I'm not some <laughs> kind of butcher. Oh, no. That doesn't sound as heartless as your reputation would imply. Well, like I said, I was just a kid. 
Were you ever caught by the authorities in New Atlantis? Oh, dozens of times. But I'd just give them a fake name, or they'd just slap me on the wrist and send me on my way. They obviously didn't think that I'd amount to anything, and didn't want to waste their time with rehabilitation. What changed that? Was it the robbery in 2218? 2218? Hmm. Huh. Oh. Yeah. The Galbank Archives. Very good, Gail. I see you've done your research. That would be when I rounded up a few of my buddies and we knocked the place over. Made off with a ton of credits. <sighs> my first big score. Is that why the Crimson Scar decided to bring you into their ranks? That's right. They brought me in, taught me the ropes, and I did crimes for them for... Oh, five years. Till I decided I wanted more. I got rid of their leader, put myself in his place, and started running the show. I've been the one in charge ever since. Was it absolutely necessary to cut his throat and leave the body on a public street in the well? On the street, reputation is everything. I wanted everyone in the city to know that Jasper Cricks was taken over. I think they got the message. <clears throat> well, well. A brutal reputation earned with blood. Hey, we've got some Aurora there. Not worth it until I get some shielded cargo. Okay, so let's go down to the bunks. Man, I get so tired of pirates on this station patting themselves on the back. I killed this. I stole that. Shut the hell up and get back to work. <laughs> All right. Never a dull moment. Need something? I'm surprised that any of these guys would leave any valuables around here. As the Crimson Fleet is not afraid to steal from their own. In the fleet, you either put up, shut up, or die. Your choice. Ooh, here we go! Evidence! Mira's demise! So wait. Say that again. You think I'm who? Stop playing games. We both know your real name is Lionel Soto. And you know why I'm here. Who are you? Fleet? Ecliptic? An independent? I've spent two long years and every credit I had looking for you. Just so I could look you in the eye before I pulled the trigger. I was with a gun. There must be some mistake. I honestly don't know who you are. Of course you don't know who I am. You're never concerned with the death you leave in your wake, in your pursuit of greed. You killed my husband, you son of a bitch! And now I'm going to kill you! I'm going to kill you! Ah, such a terrible shame. All that time and money she wasted. Ah, well. Better get rid of the body. Ooh. Well, we found some evidence there. And there's probably a whole bunch more waiting for us in here. Oh, there's part seven. Oh, come on. I want, uh, I want to go in order. Oh, well. SSN Crick's interview part seven. Let me just ask you one final question before we wrap up. Fine. Go ahead. When is enough going to be enough? How many credits does Jasper Crick's need until he's satisfied? I should have expected you to ask such a stupid question. 
How the hell could you ever understand? You with your fancy education, and your sheltered upbringing, and your cushy media job? Me? I came from nothing. Everything I own, I've literally drawn blood to gain. There's no need to get personal. I'm simply trying to state the facts so that our listeners can make judgments of their own. Lady, I got news for you. Half of your listeners think I'm a hero. The other half are scared out of their goddamn minds. And they should be. Perhaps we should talk about something else. No. That's it. We're done. Can you guys get her the hell out of here? Make sure she takes all this sound equipment with her. Well, that's it then. Thank you for your... Actually, before you go, Gail, there's one more thing I would like to say. Yes, of course. What is it? When you broadcast this interview on SSNN, I want you to remember that I'll be listening. If you edit even one word or manipulate my voice to change anything I've said, I will hunt you down and kill you. In front of everyone. Do you understand? I, uh... I understand. You have my word. Well, uh, that interview went south quick. Something happened in the recordings between the second one that we listened to and that one to really piss him off. I can't wait to find out what they say. Really? Hey, be careful not to point that thing at me. It was a heat leech. I was doing the world a favor. Hmm. Private quarters. Mm -hmm. Probably not worth my time, but uh Alright, both top only. Both both top only. Okay. So if that goes there. No easy fit for this one. Sadly, we've got overlap. All right, so that's both. So we need to figure out what we need and what we don't need. For that, we just need that, which means for this, we just need that. So these two, no, these two, sort the bottom. Which means I need to solve the top with these remaining two. Um, if we choose that, it's not going to be enough. If we choose that, then all we need is this. got to be something in these private bunks. Something that I don't want to miss. Space is not for the weak, says Graffiti on the Wall. Hey, Marzana project data. It's not evidence, though. 
Marzana project, uh, partial project data, protected by Seshat encryption, authorized access only, property of Marzana project, all content exclusively owned and controlled by Ryujin Industries. Didn't we find a lab at one point that was part of the Marzana project? Huh. Stolen artwork, 15,000. I'm a smuggler in space. Don't let me forget that I have that. Okay. Now we go upstairs yet again. Right. These are all private quarters, probably for the upper echelon. Ooh. Got some money. Leaving credits out. Not smart. Okay. Nothing else there. I hope I'm not overlooking something. I'm trying to be thorough. Got to get all the evidence. Requires key. Only the captain's room key. Ah. I wonder if we'll have to pickpocket him to get that key. I wonder if there's any other way to get the key. Does that mean I'm going to have to invest in the thief skill? You can sell contraband here, says the chat. Oh, great. Elevators. Oh, and there's the top floor. That's where I need to go. All right, so let's retrace our steps all the way down. Because we're going to end up there eventually. But I want to methodically go through everything that we have access to first before we go all the way You're to the top. You looking to start something? Because I'll finish it. We went through all of this. Okay. Every captain here has earned their stripes. All right, and we're back here. We visited the gym. We did not visit the depot or the last Nova. Whoops, that's an interior cell. I didn't realize that. The fleet protects our own, but you turn against us, and you're dead. <laughs> they have Aurora everywhere. I need another drink. I think this is the I first time I've actually heard a song on the radio. I wouldn't get on her bath side. Credits. SS interview number five. 
Certainly. Let's talk about something else. How did the Crimson Scar become the Crimson Fleet? After I busted out of the lock, I decided to take things to the next level. I had the key, a few UC ships, and a couple dozen ex-cons at my side. But I needed more, so I sent out the call. Once word got around, it didn't take long for freelance pirates from every corner of the settled systems to show up. And this is how the Crimson Fleet was born. Exactly. The key became our base of operations. We spent months reinforcing our position there, making it nearly impossible to approach. What was the UC's response to the situation? First of all, UC security gave up and handed the reins over to the big guns, the UC Navy. The Navy in turn sent ships to attack the key. I'd say there have been three major attacks over the last few years. And as you can tell by the fact we're having this interview, all the attacks were embarrassing failures. Do you feel these embarrassing failures led them to form UC systems? <laughs> Absolutely. They've clearly given up and decided to shove the responsibility onto a separate division. That way, in the public eye, the UC Navy can move forward proud and strong while UC SysDef continually takes all the blame. It's all about PR spin for them, Gail. That's how the UC operates. Kinda disgusting, don't you think? Hmm. Sounds a bit like you're trying to deflect attention off the atrocities the Crimson Fleet commits on a daily basis. Atrocities, huh? How about fighting the Freestar Collective over a bunch of rocks hanging in space? How about thousands of people dying while a bunch of pencil-pushing bastards sit in a cushy office and draw lines on a star map? Maybe the United Colonies should stop the bullshit and take a hard look in the mirror to see who the monsters really are. Oh, that's what set him off. Okay, I think we understand how he got fed up towards the end of the interview. Gontro Dim with the Super Chat says, For your information, there's lots of evidence for burden of proof. Some you can get locked out of, like a ship you'll visit, and I think the key... Good luck, Ox. For stick change. Yeah. Thanks, Gontra. That's why I'm trying to be as metho uh, methodical as I can be right now, in case I am not allowed to come back later. Sharks are too scared to take the key because it ain't no fun when the rabbit got the gun. Shake. Well, that's an interesting theory, but here's my take. First off, the creds you spend here go to the fleet. Not to me, not to you. Second, if either of you bums lay a finger on those crates, I have Delgado's express permission to blow your heads off and serve the guts as sushi. Now, either buy a drink or get the hell out of my way. Okay, and off hey, they go. Death, anyway. How's it going? Well, I was wondering when you'd wander my way. The name's Fergus. Fergus Wickham. But you could call me Bog. Welcome to the last Nova, where the drinks are never free. How'd you get the name Bog? Got it back in my experimental days. Before we fixed up Nova, she was a real boggy mess, practically an indoor swamp. I figured some of what's grown around here could make some decent booze. And some might say I only got the booze part right. Oh, God. <laughs> so, you're the bartender here? Guilty? You name it, I got it. Although, I can't speak to quality. We don't believe in expiration dates here as long as it gets the job done. Well, then you might be interested in some harvested organs. I just found my new home away from home. As long as you're buying, stay as long as you like. The last Nova never sleeps, so no last call here. Since it's your first time with us, I'm willing to make an exception to the rule and offer you my speciality on the house. One free bottle of Bog's Grog. Let me guess, it's an acquired taste, or I'll take anything that's free, or sounds disgusting. I'll take it! That's the spirit. I knew you'd be the adventurous type. <laughs> and if you like it, you're in luck. Cheapest drink you can find. 
and guaranteed to drown those sorrows. So, what's in your bog, Strong? Now, that's a trade secret, mate, and a homegrown one at that. But nothing to worry about. I've been serving it up going on 20 years now. Oh, great. Only things that have killed my customers are bullets and stupidity. Anything you can tell me about the last Nova? Nova wasn't always the lovely sight you see before you. <laughs> she used to be a hydro farm and put up quite a fight when we decided to give her a makeover. Overgrown water everywhere. I almost gave up. But what's a proper home without a pub, eh? So, what's on the menu? Bog's grog and anything else your heart desires. Well, of course, he's selling a little bit of ammo. And a bunch of aid, Bog's grog. Mmm. Plus 20 carry capacity for 10 minutes. Negative 30% oxygen recovery for 10 minutes, of course. And then, ooh, brow. And a little bit of food. All right, let's go to sell. Can we sell miscellaneous? Stolen artwork, yeah. There we go. We'll see you next time. Great. If you're doing any lifting later, I can spot you. All right, we got a terminal here. Last Nova bar computer drinks. Some of the mates have been complaining about watered down drinks. Like it's my fault we're serving the piss. Not my fault they haven't been putting in the work to keep us supplied the way we should be. Maybe they should spend less time hanging at the bar and more at the mission boards. Rats. Nava's on edge lately. Part of it is vouching for Rake, but she's been burned before. What's bloody changed is the timing. We're spread thinner than Marmite right now, and the whole crew knows it. Maybe this new rook will pan out, but if things keep going bad, it's going to be like rats leaving a sinking ship. Ooh, are things really that bad for the Crimson Fleet right now? Interesting. Got mixed feelings about my last job. Front issue four, ballistic weapons permanently do an additional 5% more critical damage. I always thought heat leeches were just pests. Never considered trying to raise one as a pet. Imagine having your own terror morph. Now the whole world knows. Jasmine Griffin. Hey, Cap, are you hiring? Got some baddies on my tail and I need a place to lay low. Hey, we can we can try and get this guy. All right, one theft, two ballistic weapon systems, one concealment. Why are you being tailed? I'm a smuggler. Making enemies comes with a job. This time I got in over my head and made one who's more dangerous than me. Well, I suppose I should probably get this guy now before I, I lose access to this place. Uh, depends on who's after you. I'm not interested in making enemies. I suppose I can't rightly blame you for that. It's the Varun Zealots. They've been on my tail a while. And they're easy enough to avoid in places like this, but I'm history if they see my ship cruising around the space lanes again. Who are the Varun Zealots? They're a group of cultists who operate on the edges of known space. Real nutjobs. They shoot at just about anyone who comes near them. They're big on grudges too. That's how I ended up on their radar. I don't hire just anyone. What kind of skills do you have? Oh, I'm a real scrapper. Good in a fist fight or in the gunner seat. Doesn't matter to me so long as there's a strong drink waiting when the fight's over. I've also got pretty sticky fingers, if that suits you. Sorry, you're on your own. I don't want anything to do with the Varun Zealots. Well, that doesn't sound so bad. You're welcome to join my crew. If the Varun Zealots don't sound like a problem to you, then... Can't wait to see what you're made of. Well, we could pay 27,000 credits, holy cow. Or we could pass a persuade check to say, since I'm doing you a favor, I think you owe me a discount on your salary. Wouldn't be much of a smuggler if I wasn't willing to cut a deal, would I? Let's hush it out. 
Oh, this is only a four. So we can try and go for it and say, who knows how long it'll be before you get another offer. Don't think I'm desperate or anything, but you do have a point. You're a good negotiator, Cap. I'll cut you a deal. 13,000. I pay a standard salary. I hope that's all right. Sure, fine by me. I'm looking forward to the adventure. Jasmine Griffin is available for your crew. All right. Um, do we have room on the Star Eagle? Nope, we don't. So we can assign her later. Sounds like a plan. Let's catch up later. Thanks again for the save. Okay, and my companion didn't dislike it. I used to work for a megacorp. Wore a monkey suit and everything. Seems like a different time. I've been hearing some stuff about the Mantis being back. If I ever find that bastard, the things I do with them. <laughs> Conversation about the Mantis. I love it. Come on. Little do they know. You hungry? Because that I, would make two of us. I wonder what would happen if I docked my Mantis ship to this star station. I wonder if they'd have any unique dialogue. Is Mina seeing anyone right now? The patience, I mean. I gotta sort him. Oh, credits. Okay. Right. Well, I think that's it for the entire pub. Back out to the marketplace. This puts us here. Let's retrace our Every time I see steps. Radley smile, I want to punch him in the face. Because that was the bar. We went all the way through there and we came out here. Make sure we didn't miss something. Now let's go to the clinic. History of the pirates. Got some health issues you need help with? Samina Mizra. First time visiting the infirmary, huh? Let me give you a piece of advice. Try not to get into too many bar fights. I'm trying to save my dwindling supplies for sale and pirates coming in off of raids. Are you a real doctor? I've done my time, but thanks to a malpractice suit, I've officially dropped the doctor title. <laughs> Don't let that worry you. I'm still just as good, if not better, than half the surgeons at the clinic. The only medical supplies I'll ever need are the kind that get me zoned. You won't have to worry about me. I'm practically bulletproof. <laughs> That's what they all say, until they stumble in bleeding out on my floor. So here's what's what. You need med packs, curatives, preventatives, I've got you covered. At least as long as my current supply holds out. You need enhancers, legal or illegal? I've got those too. You sell illegal chems in a med bay? In the fleet, someone has to do it, so it may as well be me. This way, I've got a good idea of who's on what and how much. If they come in for any real medical treatment, I know exactly what I'm dealing with. I'll keep that in mind if I need anything. Hopefully, that won't be often. Now, if you don't need anything else, I've got a particularly annoying supply issue to deal with. I bet being a medic on the key keeps you pretty busy. You'd think most of the injuries I treat are from run-ins with security or civilians taking a stand. But I'd say at least half are just life on the key. Brawls, egos, and plain old stupidity. At least it keeps me busy. Maybe I can help out with your supply issue. Now there's an offer I didn't expect. If you really want to help, I'm looking for someone who can handle themselves in a public setting. As in someone who knows how to get the job done without shooting up the place. What about the medical supplies on the Ragana? That's not going to help. That ship was full of things like cots, flu shots, and children's vitamins. And I can't exactly plug a bullet wound with an Ashta chewable. Well, I didn't say I'd do it for free. Do you really think I'd be offering you a job without pay? This isn't my first rodeo. 
I politely requested a list of supplies from Gennady Ayton at the clinic and was told the price of business has gone up. I think he's back on Aurora and he's upcharging me to pay for it. And if there's one thing I'm not going to do is subsidize his habit. I want you to make sure he delivers my supplies for the price we agreed on, but without raising any alarms. Why don't we just steal supplies from somewhere else? Oh, we will. But this way, I'm guaranteed the highest quality supplies from one of the best medical facilities in the settled systems. Plus, if Gennady does what he's supposed to do, he'll cover our tracks. You'll get those supplies and no one will get hurt. We'll see. Talk is one thing, actions are another. New mission, speak to Gennady Ayton at the clinic. Gennady has an Aurora habit? Oh yeah. The funny thing is, he's the poster boy for upstanding moral citizens. Top of the class at nursing school, did volunteer work in backwater settlements, a reputation you could eat your food off of. Ew. Nobody knows he did it all zoned out of his mind. Nobody except his old boss, me. He said he got clean when he joined the clinic, but now I wonder. Did Gennady give a reason for the price change? A bullshit one, yeah. Gennady claims prices have gone up for the clinic as a whole, and that I'm not the only doc being hit. He says if I want cheaper goods, I'm going to have to find another supplier. He even gave me a list. But I'm not turning to some third-rate doc selling meds out of their space truck. Gennady and I had a deal, and I want him to honor it. I need medical supplies. Sure. Whatever keeps you off my operating table. Right, let's see exactly what illegal chems she sells. Cocktails, injector. Okay, lots of good stuff here. I'm not sure which of these are considered illegal. Try not to die out there. But no evidence. Always ask for a bigger cut. It's all about making those credits. Okay, so that's the clinic. That's the bar. This is closed. Whatever that is supposed to be. Zuris Essentials. Zuri's Essentials. What have you got, Zuri? See any? My prices may be high, but these goods ain't exactly easy to find. How'd you end up with the fleet? I was raised fleet. My mama joined up when I was 12. She was a first-class smuggler. We'd always lived comfortably, but she took the offer to join when a job almost went south. She figured if anything ever happened to her, it guarantee I'd still have a home. Did you ever want to get out of here and try to go legit? Hell no. The two things I don't want in this life? A real boss and customers that I can't shoot in the face if they piss me off. Dell lets me do what I want to here as long as he knows I'm loyal to the fleet. I sell what I want, I work when I want, I do what I want. And I wouldn't have it any other way. Technicolor Tube says that's Meg from Fallout 76. Yeah, you're right. I recognize the voice now. I bet growing up in this lifestyle was quite the adventure. Looks like everything worked out in the end. Raised amongst pirates, I'd question those parenting skills. Let's say, quite the adventure. It's been non-stop. Even as a kid, I was helping distract security in those smuggling days. It's amazing how just having a child aboard, especially one as cute as I was, can throw off the scent. Between my mama and the fleet, I can talk my way out of anything and use or fix any weapon and ship in the galaxy. Real life skills, if you know what I mean. What exactly do you sell here? I sell a little bit of everything, but only if it's hard to find and only for a high price. Neuro amps, a few unique resources, maybe a specialized weapon or two, anything that's rare and in high demand. Let's talk trade. <laughs> now you're speaking my language. Okay, notes, Dracula, the Count of Monte Cristo, Aid, antibiotic cocktail, resources. Uh, nothing really that I need. 
Uh, miscellaneous antique videotape, old earth flip lighter, ornate star 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 tar. Uh, okay, let's see. Helmets, ecliptic stuff, apparel, neuro boost, mark two. 10% intimidation chance. Neuro attack, mark three. 15% instigation chance. Space undersuit. <laughs> that just looks funny on my character. Um, what's a neuro boost? Oh, it appears on my face like that. Huh. I've never tried a neuro boost before. Plus 10% intimidation chance. Instigation chance. What's the instigation? Well, I don't want to instigate, but I might want to intimidate. But I don't even have the intimidation perk. So, the best part is how much creds she has. Says Asmo, and yeah, you're right. She's got 13,000 to barter with. Technicolor Tube says those are called amps and they require the associated perks to function. I see. Well, I don't have the perks for it. Hold on, let's check out her weapons. Hey, I'm always ready to take. Uh, let's see, she's got Hunter Wolf and Power Beat. Um, Varun Pain Blade. Wow. A melee weapon. That looks great. Well, um... It's a rare rifle. It's not better than what I've got, but... I've got plenty of credits, and I do want to complete my collection of uh, named items, so we'll buy it. And same with Power Beat. And I'm sure we'll get a Varun Pain Blade elsewhere. Don't be a stranger. Okay, trade authority. Let's check out the trade authority. Bog's grog is fine if you like cheap moonshine. Give me an Erdebrau lager and I'm good. Erdebrau, wait here. Let's see what we have now. What'll it be, friend? Buying, selling? The Trade Authority takes anything and everything. Xanala says, seeing how there's been a couple cyberpunk-themed references so far, what were your final thoughts on Cyberpunk 2077? Did you enjoy the world slash lore? Well, I don't think it would be fair to the game for me to give final thoughts on a game that has undergone so much improvement since I last played it, especially uh, since they've just recently released a DLC that puts a definitive... Um, cap on the game, uh, but uh, when I played it, it was fun. I enjoyed it. I thought the story was pretty good. It wasn't mind-blowing. I found um, all of the different endings that we were able to have pretty lackluster, uh, simply based on the fate of V, which was something we couldn't get past. Uh, there was plenty of glitches. We experienced a lot of them in my first broadcast. Uh, you want to speed things up? Which was memorable. Uh, and the, the city itself had lots of empty areas. But for what it was, I enjoyed my time. What's the trade authority, we can say? <laughs> yeah, like you don't know. Oh, you really don't know, do you? Uh, to the public, we promote free trade throughout the galaxy. You see, free star independent, doesn't matter. To you and your friends here, same rules still apply. We buy and sell any goods, no questions asked. Man of Warb says, I wonder if the railroad uh, name themselves as such because they have a one-track mind about saving synths? <laughs> Quite possibly. It's certainly not a reference to the Underground Railroad at all. What's with the suit? Well, a well-kept appearance gives the impression of a respectable establishment. The more respectable the place, the more credits people are willing to pay. Back off, I'm not your friend. Or I'm just saying what the depot has to offer. The fleet's got an impressive commerce system. They even managed a legitimate doctor among their ranks. Business on the key is like no other. It's the sole reason I'm here. For the credits. 
Ian Allen says there's a book in one of the passengers' rooms that gives you a location on Earth, Ox. Okay, just to be clear, are you talking about this space station or on a ship later? Because I just went into many of the rooms already and I didn't find a unique book that I hadn't already found. So please clarify if this really is the place where I'm going to find the book. Because if so, I'll go back and check those rooms again. Why does the Crimson Fleet allow the Trade Authority to be here? It's the mutual benefit. The Trade Authority buys any goods of value. We don't care how you got it, only that we can profit from it. It's the fastest way to turn your hard-earned loot into legitimate credits, ready to spend. So, naturally, it made sense to establish a presence here. Why risk flying into New Atlantis or Aquila City when you can just do business here? It's in the captain's quarters, says Ms. Cordelia Chesterfield. Ah, the one room I wasn't able to explore because I didn't have the key. That makes sense. I assume there would be something in, in there that I would need. All right, how long have you been here on the key? I'd say it's been about 10 years now since the Trade Authority assigned me this post. It felt a little extreme at the time, but I can see why they figured it was a good fit. We could say I figured the key was for Crimson Fleet only, or if credits is all you want, you'll fit right in. Let's try Crimson Fleet only. There are a few who share that sentiment. You'd think a successful business relationship would change their minds, but a few will always see me as an outsider. Regardless, as long as the fleet has goods to push, the Trade Authority will always maintain a presence on the key. Do you ever consider joining the fleet? I left a similar lifestyle behind, when I joined the Trade Authority, I never looked back. A lot of the rooks here see freedom and lawlessness, but that's only if you don't get caught. True freedom is not having a bounty on your head, with every cop and mercenary out to get you. How did you end up working for the Trade Authority? Let's just say I've done my fair share of questionable activities in the past. With the credits I amassed, I gave the Trade Authority a sizable donation in exchange for a clean slate and a stable job. So, here I am, at your service. Let's talk business. I was hoping you'd say that. Weapons. Nothing unique. Spacesuits, nothing unique. Helmets. Aid. Resources and miscellaneous. Digipics. You find anything of value, bring it here first. Will do. Okay, no more evidence. We've really only found one piece of evidence by exploring this key so far. Uh, hopefully that'll change as we continue on. Okay, so we've got this, which is closed. Let's go around this way first. TK's tactical gear. We call UC Stev sharks. But to the fleet, they're just bait. SSN Crix interview part three. So tell us about Jasper Crix's version of the Crimson Scar. All I can tell you is that under my guidance, the Crimson Scar became more influential than every other syndicate combined. Here I was, 22 years old, and I had power, people that followed my orders, and an endless stream of credits. Gail, I have to tell you, I was having the time of my life. So you consider extortion, robbery, burglary, kidnapping, assault, and murder to be positive life influences? No. I'd consider them as just means to an end. Those so-called crimes were merely stepping stones until I had enough wealth to buy the Crimson Scar a few spacecraft. Yes, let's talk about that. It appears you weren't satisfied with terrorizing New Atlantis alone. Oh, I've never stopped reaching, Gail. The amount of money we were making in New Atlantis was decent, but the really big scores were in space on the cargo ships. We're talking millions of credits, maybe more. <laughs> Who the hell could count it all? Most people assume this is when the UC decided to actively set up a task force to pursue the Crimson Scar. 
That's correct. Those idiots in charge of the United Colonies were clearly embarrassed that they had allowed the Crimson Scar to make the jump into space. They sent ships after us. Lots of ships. I almost think that they enjoy starting wars. Perhaps this was the first time you had finally reached too far. You could say that. I count my time running the Crimson Scar as a learning experience. I wouldn't say I reached too far. I'd say I reached too fast. Didn't cover all my bases. Made some stupid mistakes. One thing's for certain, though. When I was finally arrested and thrown into the lock, I had plenty to think about. <laughs> all right. The story is becoming more clear. Chad is telling me I need to sell my contraband, but I already did. Check it out. We'll go to miscellaneous section and it's all gone. All the contraband is gone. I sold it at the bar when I went to the bar. Novice lock. But it's not red, so I should be able to get by. All right, top only. Right there. That means this goes here. I hope you can succeed at that before we are discovered. Smuggling beats a real job any day. Okay, we've got it upstairs. We'll go upstairs in just a second. Goodness, this is just elaborate. All right, uh, General Need Goods. something? These materials don't sell themselves. I hope you actually need components. I hate wasting my time. What is it you sell here? It's a general store, which means I sell general goods. Mostly junk that no one else wants to carry. Raw materials, blueprints, spare parts. Fascinating, I know. So how'd you end up in the fleet? I don't do small talk. You want to do business? We'll do business. You want to chat? Go see Bog. <laughs> okay, let me see what you got. Fine. Not like I have anything better to do. Throwables. Aid. Resources. Okay. Whatever. Cheery. Now that's all set to owned, interestingly. Ask Jazz about any ship upgrades. Nothing worse than a pirate ship with no personality. Cornered, calibrated, breach, and it's not set to owned. Weapons, ammo, mods, whatever you need. Okay, Alduratan. Well, well. Neva's new hotshot. <laughs> I knew you'd find your way back to my little corner of the key. Everyone always does. Osriel says, Hey Ox, I gotta say I enjoy your content. I can't stay because I'm all the way back on stream 18. Also, what did the Sun Computer call his father? Data. It doesn't work if, if you say it like data. Pronounce it data. But it does if you say data. Okay. Osriel, thank you. That's great. And that was Osriel's first super chat. Thank you very much, Osriel. So, what are you selling? Take a look around, genius. And don't tell me you've never laid eyes on a gun before. But just in case I need to spell it out for you, the merch I carry is known as weapons and ammunition. Oh. Get it? Thank you. Uh, not much of a coroner, if you ask me. Or let's just skip the intro. I'm just here to buy. Hey, if you want to pour credits into my pocket, you won't hear any arguments from me. I carry most of the standard hardware. You know, kinetics, electromags, energy. 
Even a few explosives. Occasionally, I stock a few smuggled items. Basically, the stuff Sysdev doesn't want you to play with. Oh? Just don't screw me over or I'll be inclined to give you a free demo. With your head as the target. That threat might work if I was the least bit intimidated by you. I may be new here, but you can trust me. Let me guess. Trust issues? Oh, we all have trust issues here. A little advice, Sadiqui? The fleet's trust can't be bought. You earn it. You bleed for the fleet, the fleet bleeds for you. Pure and simple. Anyone who says otherwise is either lying or getting ready to stab you in the back. <clears throat> Thanks for the etiquette lesson, Professor. Or I expect this has roots in something very personal. Ah, oh, please, I don't need your concern. All I care about is separating you from your credits. So let's leave our professional relationship at that, all right? Are you the most popular shop here? <laughs> I'd argue Boggs got me beat as far as customer base goes. But when it comes to profit, I am on top. A good gun's what makes all the difference out there sometimes. And for some, it's the only thing they'll ever trust. Can you go over what you sell again? Weapons of all shapes and sizes to handle jobs large and small. Ammo too, of course. I'm interested in what you have in stock. Plenty of merchandise to choose from. Okay, weapons. Oh, here we go. Feather. Ooh, a rare tombstone. Titanium build. Premium build materials makes this weapon light as a feather. All right. 14,000. Yikes. And fury. Ooh, an old earth sawed off AK, AK. What is this? Furious. Each consecutive hit deals more damage. All right. Pirate legend. A rare maelstrom, it looks like. It's got the space adept uh, legendary effect. And that's it for the unique weapons. Plenty of ammo. And throwables. All right. Are you looking See you to start around. something? Because I'll finish it. Dude, chill out, lady. Okay. Can we go behind here? We Please can. Please tell me you know exactly what materials you need. This security access is open. But these are all set to owned, except for these. I could take all of that, but I'm running low on uh, inventory space, so I'm not gonna do that. TK's tactical, did we? That last job didn't pan out. No, I we need didn't. something bigger. Well, the right protective gear can make all the difference. Well, <laughs> no price is too high when it comes to protection, right? What do you specialize in? Well, only the best tactical gear to protect your ass this side of the galaxy. Metal plated for when you're up against bullets. Leather for those jobs that might require a subtle touch. All made by yours truly, of course, except for a few used odds and ends that no one's going to miss. <laughs> Do you ever head out on raids with the others? What, me? Nah, not anymore. When it comes to aim, there ain't no one worse. True facts. I mean, my friends like to say I'd have better luck talking someone to death than shooting them. Yep, my talents are best suited for making protective gear. Helmets, vests, suits. You could say I'm a tailor, not a fighter. I'll take a look at what you have. The right gear can be the difference between life or death. Weapons, a cutter, spacesuits, a variety. Packs. All right, so this is an armorer. Lots of helmets. Pirate crew outfit. Pirate swashbuckler gear. Are these unique? I don't know. Digipix and heal gel. I am here if you need me. Great.
Okay, was this the staircase we saw earlier? Don't trip. It was. Let's go up here and see what we've got. Blowing off some steam. Just making the world a better place. Oh, you know they're gonna hide something back here in this nondescript place. Samira can do more than patch you up. She's got a drugs of every kind. If you know what I mean. Okay, that goes back down to the lobby area. Where does this go? What does, oh. Okay, that's where I need to go for the quest. Right, well, let's finish the way we started. We're almost done exploring this whole place. If I had a Berian crest, I'd run my own city, like Bayou. Except in my town, you could do Aurora anywhere. All right, that's where we entered. Rook. Reckoner's Core yeah. and Ship Services. Let's start with Reckoner's Core. As long as you put the fleet first, we won't have any problems. Need to have Aludra take a look at this kinetic. Recoil's off. Just money laying out. Okay, the depot, the clinic. Have we been here? Oh, I see. Oh, okay. That's where we're at. We Okay, we went the wrong... Uh, I see. We've done a big loop. This is the way Every we initially time I see came Ramsey in. Smile, I want to punch him in the face. So now we need to go through here. You've got stuff to smuggle. I've got the stuff to hide it. Is that Jazz? We need to talk to Jazz to get shielded cargo, don't we? Jasmine. I heard Isla's sister is some hardcore mercenary. I wouldn't get Ask her Ask Jazz about any ship upgrades. Nothing worse than a pirate ship with no personality. Ship services. circuit board. All right, I heard a computer somewhere. Hey, Jasmine's computer. Grease monkeys. Dell wanted to know if I needed a few extra grease monkeys to help maintain things around here, and I told him any more would just get in my way. I don't mean to sound arrogant, and I know my bandwidth is thin, but no one else can do what I do. I don't trust a new mechanic to understand how we've kept this station together with vacuum tape and bailing wire. There's just too much tribal knowledge. The same goes for the ships. The Estrella. I knew what I was getting into when I joined the fleet, but it was always my skin on the line, so I could handle it. No biggie. This is different. Nev, she loves this. Being a pirate is her raison de terre. So the best way I can keep her safe is by working on her ship. Every nut, bolt, and wire on the Estrella, I've hooked up with these two hands. And as insurance, I've put in something extra to keep her out of harm's way. Knowing all this helps calm the nerves a little, but not completely. Now I know why mo Mom gave me this toolbox the day I said goodbye. I want to ask her if the worrying's gotten easier, but I already know the answer. So she's in a relationship with Nev. Ooh, we've got an intercom here. Let's try that. Nothing. Request A17 evidence. Yes! Hey, Jam. I'm including this month's list of parts I need for the key. Don't bust a gut, it's hefty, but I know you can handle it. I'm gonna need a lot more than usual this time. I'm planning to overhaul the entire electrical system before it completely shorts out. Oh yeah, thanks for sending over the key's reactor specs. I can't tell you exactly why I needed those. Dell said to keep it hush-hush. As far as next month's shipment, start scrounging up some parts so I can spruce up our defensive batteries. They're looking kind of rusty. Well, I guess that's it for now. 
I'll have my people in New Atlantis drop off the payment at the spaceport. Ooh. Just make sure you aren't being followed. We wouldn't want the UC to know they're providing replacement <laughs> parts to the Crimson Fleet. Damning evidence. And I got it. So that's two pieces of evidence that we have found so far. If there are any more, and I finish exploring everything without finding it, you let me know. Because I'd hate to miss out. Okay, Jazz. Ship services? You need it, I've got it. So, looks like we got ourselves a new rook. Once again, I'm Jazz, resident engineer here. Like Neva said, you need ship parts, repairs? I'll hook you up. As long as your credits are good. What's the deal with you and Neva? Neva's mine, so don't be getting any ideas. That's what I thought. She may be a little rough around the edges, but she's just looking out for her own. There's no one better to have your back. Jazz? Didn't Nevea call you Jasmine? Neva's the only one who calls me that, amongst other things. To you and everyone else, it's just plain old Jazz. It must take a lot of effort to keep this tin can off life support, or I hope the fleet has a wider variety than the UC and the Freestar Collective. Uh, let's try this one. Oh, it did when I first got here. Most of these folks aren't too keen on maintenance. Today, the key's about as safe as any other UC station, just with a hell of a lot more personality. I can guarantee your ship will be in good hands. So if you're looking for an upgrade, let me know. We got the best selection in the settled systems. Illegal, unregistered, recalled. We sell it all. No questions asked. Will these parts show up on UC or Freestar security scanners? No, 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 no. You buy from me, you're worry-free. I can't have my customers getting caught now, can I? <laughs> That's bad for business. No way! Legit manufacturer parts only for me, or I'm always looking for an edge. Anything that keeps the UC and Freestar Rangers off your tail is a must-have in my book. Just let me know when you want to talk business. How did- so how did you wind up on the key? <laughs> Truth is, the fleet rescued me. Of Course, I wouldn't have needed rescuing if they hadn't blown up the ship I was working on. Delgado plucked me out of space and brought me to the key. I took one look at the place and was compelled to work. Soon after, he offered me a permanent spot with the fleet. How serious are things between you and Neva? Serious enough that you don't have a chance in hell? <laughs> She's jealous. Neva's got a fire in her, the kind you only see in an engine pushed to its limit. She doesn't half-ass a damn thing, and I love her for it. Mind helping me with my ship? No, but just remember, I don't work for free. Let's see. We could see what ships she has for sale. Shops always open as long as your money's good. All right, so what does the Crimson Fleet have in terms of ships? The Crimson Fleet Ghost 3, the Crimson Fleet Spectre 2. These all look really interesting, but the stats aren't that good compared to mine. Ooh, Crimson Fleet White. I like it. Crimson Fleet Wraith. Crimson Fleet Banshee. And the Crimson Fleet Haunt. Let's see if we can work on that shielded cargo. If you want to stay under the radar, I've got just... If you've got the credits, I've got the time. Super Terum says there's a total of three evidence slates on the key. Great. Well, we haven't been to the captain's quarters, and we haven't been to the uh, cockpit area, so we need to go there. Perhaps we haven't um, seen it yet. Um, I'd like to... Uh, first, my ship needs repairs. <sighs> Don't worry. We should be able to piece it back together. A thousand credits. I'd like to view and modify my ships. Sounds like fun. Let's see what I've got. Now, the tricky part is going to be figuring out how to put a shielded cargo on this thing. Let's try upgrade. We can upgrade weapon, weapon. That's it. Just the two weapons. Let's try ship builder. Cargo. 
Cargo hold. Oh, I need starship design. How do I put shielded cargo on this? Options left control. Undo, redo. Okay. Uh, color, edit, space. Whoops. Hitomi says, yeah, you have to use the add button to basically bolt on the shielded cargo. Oh, okay. That's a stout brig. Living quarters. Let's see if I can attach. Now that's landing bays. Let's try, I guess landing bay. Can I put a shielded cargo? That's a galleon cargo hold. It doesn't say anything about shielded. Cockpits, dockers, engines, fuel tanks, grav drives, high habs, reactors, shields, structural. Cargo. So I've got three cargo hold options, two of which are blocked to me because I don't have the high enough rank of starship design, and this one doesn't say anything about being shielded. Art Pixel says add when not looking at the ship to see shielded cargo. Okay. Add. G. Cargo. There you go. 100 CM ballast shielding shielded cargo. Um, okay, but is this going to shield all of my cargo or just one piece of cargo? So I probably want something that's sleek. Looks like it would go there. There we go. Shielded cargo. Oh no, what doesn't work there? One hundred and ninety, one hundred and sixty. There we go. Can I flip it? Can I fl flip it so it fits on that side? Flip. There we go. I just added two shielded cargo holds. Um, it shields the weight amount listed. I see. Well, hopefully that'll be enough. Flight check. All systems nominal. We're done. There we go. I now have shielded cargo on my ship. One second. Too many missions. Not enough time. All right. We did it. You see, you'll never crush the fleet. They'd have to catch us first. Smuggling beats a real job any day. Okay, I think we pr proceed with the quest. It's 
do that, we go upstairs. Let's do a quick save here. Really don't want to have to redo all of that. And let's see, we could have come... Ah, there is our other new recruit. From this direction. Command center. Delgado. Let's go to notes. Uh, I was hoping for the Delgado. Crimson Fleet profile Delgado. Clever, shrewd, careful, calculating. Aquila City. Came from wealth. Okay. So, now that we are all here, it's time to get down to business. The two of you are the only rooks that have made the latest cut. The rest, well, let's just say they won't be joining us ever again. Neva's willing to put her neck on the line and vouch for you, which means you've got what it takes to join the Crimson Fleet. Art Pixel says signal jammers are also helpful to avoid scans. Thank you, Art Pixel. I'll try to find those in a bit. We can say I'm just waiting to cash in, or after what Nevea put me through, she'd better vouch for me, or I won't disappoint. He's shrewd, so if we're too eager to please, he might see through that. Let's try, after what Neva put me through, she'd better vouch for me. If dealing with the Ragana was at the limit of your capabilities, then you have a serious problem on your hands. You are already in too deep to quit. And I can promise you, it only gets more difficult from here. Okay, that probably wasn't good. All right, let's get started here. When you sign up with the Crimson Fleet, you're in it for the long haul. No one quits. No one retires. The only way out is death. You stay loyal or you pay the consequences. Fleet before friends. Fleet before family. Fleet before yourself. Super Terum says Jasmine sells jammers. They attach like weapons. Thank you, Super. I'll take a look at that later. Why would a pirate organization have so many rules? Of course we have rules. If you think the Crimson Fleet was built on a lawless dream, think again. Our influence, our money, our respect comes from meticulous planning and every last soul in the fleet following my orders to the letter. That is why you need to learn to place the fleet before everything. I hope that doesn't include fleet before breakfast because I like to sleep late. <laughs> I don't like taking orders or got it, boss. Boss? <laughs> Good. You're getting it already. I like that. Can we get on with this? I want to get drunk at the last Nova. I'm impressed. That is the first intelligent thing you have said this entire time, Mathis. Since you two seem so eager to move forward, let's get to your next job. Pack your cold weather gear, Rooks. Where we are going, you're going to need it. Oh, God, don't tell me you're dragging him down to Suvaral for another one of your little initiation runs. Ten Johns to the surface, twelve dead Rooks. You think by now you would have given up on that goddamn campfire story? Crix's legacy is no story, neighbor. We've got fresh eyes in the fleet. And if these two want to impress, they're going to help me search those ruins. I hope you're right, Dale. That new code we grabbed for the lot cost us a ton of credits. And a decent captain. This initiation, as Neva calls it, is your chance to see where it all began. On Suvorov with Jasper Griggs. Griggs led the riots that gave birth to the Crimson Fleet. And if his legacy is still out there, we're going to be the ones to find it. <clears throat> Speaking of which, we're still missing episodes uh, five, I think, of the interview with Crix. How many tests and initiations do I have to go through? What? Were you expecting a goddamn graduation ceremony? Think I'm just going to slap a skull on you and send you on your way? Make no mistake. You are being tested all the time. 
Every job you take will be under constant scrutiny. And neighbor? Oh, she's just waiting for you to screw things up. So you take every new pirate on these initiations? Of course. Where else could I find such a perfect location to weed out any rooks who'd be wasting the fleet's time? What's this code Neva's talking about? Through a bit of luck and a hell of a lot of cash, Neva was able to get her hands on an access code to the inside of the lock. This will be the first time someone from the Grinson fleet has set foot in there for, well, since Grix left the place behind. It has been frustrating being this close to potential clues, but not being able to find a way through those prison walls. Maybe you should tell me more about Crix's legacy. Before Crix left the fleet, he left a message talking about a major score. One that would set up the fleet to be a big player in the settled systems. Somewhere down the line, they started calling it Crix's legacy. And everyone who's tried to find it has wound up empty-handed, missing, or dead. If we're gonna beat those odds, we'll first need a lead. And I would wager we will find one on Subarov. Dale's leaving out the best part. That this whole search is based on a handful of words on a very old slate. Crix left a lot of big talk on that recording. And not a lot of facts. Some of us believe in it more than others. <laughs> Don't listen to her. <laughs> when we get our hands on Crix's legacy, the fleet will be operating at a completely different level. We will become more than a match for UC Sistef. So it's a good old-fashioned uh, treasure hunt. Won't the fleet just become a larger target for UC Sistef? You forget the UC is still licking its wounds from the colony wars. They don't have the capability to mount a full-scale assault. And if they were foolish enough to attack, we would have the manpower to push those pendejos right back to Jemison. If we have Crix's legacy. What if Neva's right and Crix's legacy isn't real? Listen to the words that I am saying. The legacy is real. You will find that out in due time, provided you're willing to put in the work. Nothing worth having ever comes easy. Let's just get it over with. That's a little overly ambitious, or we'll be unstoppable. Exactly. Now you're beginning to understand. Okay, enough discussion. We have got a lot of work to do. To that end, the next stop is the lock. I've had Jazz feed the coordinates into your ship's computer. Since Mathis doesn't have a ship, he's going to ride with me. I'll see you down there, Rook. Don't keep me waiting. All right, and we got 93,000 credits and pirate swashbuckler gear. If there's anything you can tell me about Jasper Crick's history before he ended up in the lock? <laughs> I could tell you stories that would last for hours. But now is not the time. You have a job to do, and I don't like to be kept waiting. When you... Well, if you get back to the key. I am sure you can find some copies of the interview he gave to SSNN around here. Clamor. I think those recordings might give you the history lesson that you are looking for. Well, I've already found one, uh, most of them. I'm just missing one. Might have I asked more about this initiation? Yeah, I suppose. What did you want to know? What happened to Jasper Crix in the lock? Nobody knows exactly what went down. I mean, there's all sorts of rumors. Crix was in prison for almost five years. And judging from the look of the facility, every moment must have been miserable. I suppose he just got fed up and decided to take matters into his own hands. Got the prisoners behind them and kept pushing until he reached the key. The cojones on that guy. You see his toughest supermax prison, and he just waltzed the hell out of there like it was nothing. I would love to have been a part of that. Can you tell me more about the lock? The UC built the lock as a supermax prison a little under... Well, it must have been at least a hundred years ago. Before that, those concha Jesus madres marooned prisoners on the planet's surface and left them to their own devices. So you can imagine, this turned into some kind of demented survival of the fittest. Prisoners killing each other for a chance at the meager supplies. 
Luckily, some whistleblowers back in New Atlantis saw this as cruel and unusual punishment and pressured the UC into building the facility. Five years after the prison was completed, Cricks touched off the riots that overran the lock and eventually the key. What can you tell me about Suvorov? It's cold. Bitter cold. Just about the last place you would want to find yourself without heat. The few living things that can survive the extreme temperatures are constantly fighting to stay at the top of the food chain. The Crimson Fleet called Suvorov the White Hell. To me, it's paradise. Someone up here pisses me off enough, I send them down to the surface for a little overnight visit. Snaps them right back into line. Well, looks like I'm getting hypothermia. <clears throat> What's the deal with Mathis? There is no deal. You and Mathis are two sides of the same coin. A couple of rooks fighting for a spot in the fleet. Only problem is that he is down a ship and you are not, which puts you ahead. Just barely. Who knows? Maybe he'll get lucky and you won't make it off sewer off in one piece. Well, that's all for now. Fine. Then get moving. And the other guys all left before I had a chance to talk to them. But we can explore this place, see if we can find any more evidence. Yeah? What you thinking of doing after all this? I don't know. Probably take my cut and hop onto a transport. We may not have official security on the key, like but you we're always looking out for traitors. I don't trust shielding. I got secret compartments on my ship just in case. In the fleet, you either put up, shut up, or die. Your Everyone choice. is so chatty. Just chatty, chatty, chatty. There is not a lot here. A lot of us in the fleet came out of the mud. We grind for every crat, and it shows. A situation room. Hey. Oh, there it is. SSN Crick's interview part four. Tell us about your arrest. Oh, my arrest was spectacular. Definitely one for the record books. You see security sent an armada after our little fleet of ships and picked us off one by one until the remainder of us made it to the wheel. For a listener's benefit, that was the star station in orbit around Voli that you destroyed just before your arrest, correct? You see, that's what they'd have you believe, but the truth is much less sinister. There was a firefight on the wheel when they tried to bring us in. We hold up, but you see security unleashed hell. The damage they caused was catastrophic. We only surrendered so we wouldn't die when the station exploded. Well, the UC says you set demolition charges to try and cover your tracks and make your escape. That's their story. You'll have to go with your gut on what you think really happened. Anyway, they took us in and tossed us into the lock. That lovely... Resort they opened on Suvorov. And you were imprisoned there for how long? Well, it was supposed to be for life, Gail. <laughs> but I ended up serving two years before I decided I'd had enough. Is there any particular reason that you started the riots that eventually led to the worst prison break in United Colonies history? Particular reason? Yes. I'm quite proud of that, actually. I honestly didn't think it would go as well as it did. As for the reason, well, it's simple. The UC were treating us like animals. The conditions in the lock were ridiculously bad and no one cared. That's why they stuck us on that ice ball in the first place. Out of sight, out of mind. Your escape caused the deaths of many that were stationed at the lock. Some would brand that as a bit dismissive for what you're describing as a protest. If you were simply advocating for your fellow inmates, why didn't you just go through the proper channels? And what the hell was I supposed to do? Send a strongly worded letter to my duly appointed representative? Wake up. The UC only responds to actions, not words. In 
my mind, there was no other choice. You know what? L let's move past my time at the lock so we can get to the point of this goddamned interview. Okay. Quickly losing his patience as the interview went on. Backpack stands. Any incriminating evidence? A chain hanging from the rafters. Okay, I think that was the only holotape. Uh, I'm sorry, slate. That was in there. Okay, that's back out the way we came. And have we done the full loop? Well, we haven't been upstairs yet. Is this important? Because I'm pretty sure you've been given orders. I thought Delgado needed you on the planet. Why are you talking to me? Why do I keep getting called a rook? Because that's exactly what you are. A rookie, a newbie, fresh meat. Beneath all of that inexperience, I'm sure you have an actual name. But honestly, no one gives a damn. So get used to hearing that word. Until you earn your stripes, you're a rook to everyone in the fleet. Can you tell me anything about Mathis? Mathis is a real piece of work. Adler shoveled him onto us about a week before you turned up. One of the greediest rooks I've seen come through the key in a long time. Dumb as a bag of spanners, too. Do you know he had the guts to ask Delgado for jump fuel compensation after being asked <laughs> to fly out here? He didn't get it, but damn. <laughs> if you want my advice, save everyone the trouble and make sure he doesn't come back from your little planetary excursion on Suvorov. Oh, murder, huh? So, do you trust me? What kind of stupid question is that? This is the Crimson Fleet. Trusting someone is as pointless as trying to carry water in your bare hands. Do you have any idea how many assholes I've had to put down because they decided to try and make a run at me? Or Dale? Way too many. Just follow directions and keep making the fleet money. And we won't have a problem. Clear? Am I right in assuming you don't believe Crix's legacy is real? Let's put it this way. I know Delgado needs something to give rooks like you some confidence. But let's get real for a second. Do you really think Crix could hide that much wealth and keep it hidden from the rest of us for over a hundred years? No way. Secrets last as long as supernovas around here. No one can keep their mouth shut unless someone shuts it for them. Nah. <laughs> It's all a bunch of bullshit. Look, I'm not trying to bust Dale's balls. He's not the first to go looking for that fairy tale, and I'm damn sure he's not going to be the last. Good luck. Well, maybe I can find it. Who knows, right? I'm going to get another Galvan truck. Galvan again? Uh, I suppose it's a Stranger things have happened. Delgado's Terminal. Hey. Ooh, ooh. Voss's parts evidence. Regarding the specifications for my in interface, I'm going to need to make a few minor adjustments. Galbank is switching to an orthogonal hexabit encryption. Wow, that was a mouthful. So I want to crank up the core clock on my, on my arm hardware. You can probably get that equipment from Ryujin. I also need to have a storage injector port added so I can keep any damn tr trace packets off my system. It probably wouldn't hurt to throw in some electromag protection too. The ele electrical systems on the key is terrible and a short circuit could fry the whole setup. Last but not least, I might need a few cushions for the chair in the Reckoner's core. They're wearing a bit thin. I wonder why this is incriminating. Probably because it's sent to Shin Shinya Voss, I guess. Hi, Somebody is working with the Crimson Fleet who shouldn't be. All right, Delgado's computer. 
And he's not going to care if I just go into his personal computer. No. Personal logs by a thread. Not that I'd admit it to Neva, but the fleet's in bad shape. We've lost a lot of good people and replaced them with human chaff. The worst part is people are starting to turn on each other. That's how it is when things go to crap. It's every pirate for themselves. I doubt there will be a mutiny, though. Neva talks a lot of crap, but she's loyal. And the rest of these idiots are too stupid or too greedy to agree on anything, let alone a new captain for the fleet. A pirate's idea of an even split is cutting you in two, so any conversation about banding together ends with a drunken brawl at the Nova. No, if this thing falls apart, it'll just collapse out from under us like a damn sinkhole. And the way I see it, we're not going to survive hunting and pecking for creds. We need to go all in. The fleet's future starts and ends with Crix's legacy. Aquila City. Sometimes I dream about Aquila City, the sand-dusted streets, the thick, heavy air, and the call of the wild beyond the wall. Everything is just how I remember it. I'm back with my old crew, doing heists and busting heads for loose change. Milk money, we called it, and we were the bullies. There's only one thing that's off, really. The days have no light. Every time I look up, the sky is pitch black. At first, I thought it was old age. I've spent too much time on this floating piece of tin. Maybe I'd forgotten what the Achilles, Aquila sky looked like. But that's not it. When I'm awake, I can remember all of it easily enough. No, it's because even as an arrogant little street punk, subconsciously, I know Aquila City isn't home. Up here with the fleet is where I belong. I want the key to his personal... Were my instructions unclear? What do you want? Jazz, that's all right. so, so, let's talk. Jazz. Were my instructions unclear? What do you want? Might have I asked more about this initiation? And I suppose it can't possibly wait until we get down there? Fine. What is it? That's it. Dude is wearing a scarf. Like, really? Intercom. All right, all right, all right. I'm, I'm moving. What's this? Hello. SSN Crix interview part six. I believe this finishes the entire interview. Tell us what the future holds for the Crimson Fleet. <sighs> changes are coming, Gale. Huge changes. The Crimson Fleet will soon be a much bigger player in this little game between the members of the settled systems. That's quite a bold statement. Would you care to elaborate? Well, let's just say that I'm on the brink of a score so large, it makes everything else pale in comparison. Beyond that, you'll just have to wait and see. <laughs> if you aren't willing to discuss the details, why grant SSN end this interview? Simple. I refuse to allow the UC to spin or bury the story, making it sound like they're in complete control of the situation. I'm gonna tell you right now, they aren't. Why does the Crimson Fleet need to make this mysterious move that you're being so evasive about? <laughs> I know Sistef instructed you to draw this meeting out as long as possible. So let me sum this up. I intend to make sure that the Crimson Fleet becomes the United Colony's worst nightmare. And nothing, I mean nothing in this universe, will stop me from achieving that goal. There are those that would disagree with you and claim this interview is grandstanding, or worse, a recruitment tool. After all, SSNN reaches every corner of the settled systems, and your aspirations could inspire the Directionalists to turn to the fleet. You and the sheep that listen to your garbage can believe whatever the hell you want. If you were so worried about what I had to say, you wouldn't have allowed yourself to be brought here. And there we go. The full interview. Come on, give me some more. I want the key. I want the key to his office. The key to his private quarters. Am I going to have to get the theft skill just to get the key? Diary of Keone. Oh, it's in his... It's here! Okay. Well, there's still the captain's quarters that we need access to, but this is the book we were looking for. 
Diary of Ki uh, Kaiosuke Nagata. And I sit. Like my grandfather and great-grandfather before me, I know I will never leave this prison. My wife said my family was cursed. The Nagantas thought perhaps whatever spirits we offended would leave us be when we fled Osaka, but maybe we are cursed. And all of this because I lifted baby formula. These laws are pitiless, leaving my wife, my child, with no hope. And I just sit here, getting angrier. They think they can just lock us away on some forgotten planet. But instead, they feed this prison more bodies, more rage, more vengeance. One day, the warden will pay. Maybe not this warden, but they will regret their justice. And our vengeance will be the stuff of legends. From the diary of Kyosuke Nagata, an early prisoner in the lock who was eventually executed for staging a prison riot. Hey, visit Osaka Landmark on Earth. All right. Okay, well, unless I'm greatly mistaken, that's all of the evidence and all of the unique Earth locations that we can get aside from getting the key to the captain's room. But I don't know how we're going to get that key unless we try to lift it from his inventory or by killing him, which is something we might be able to do in the future, depending on how this quest works out. So, we'll move on from here. Let's take a look at our quest log really quick. Echoes of the past. We need to go down there for Delgado. Burden of proof. Return evidence to Lieutenant Toft. Do we go ahead and return the evidence we have now? Or do we go ahead and meet him on the planet? I'm not sure. The priority in which we do this. Right, let's get out of here. Will we be taking off immediately, or are there other matters that require your attention? I like my weapons like I like my coffee. Scalding. <laughs> it would seem that none of the wealth stolen over the decades has been spent on upkeep for the station. This bodes poorly. Return the evidence, says chat. That'll delay me. And I wonder if that's going to raise questions. I wonder if he's going to ask. Where have you been? We can save beforehand. Smuggling beats a real job any day. Super Terum says, don't forget those jammers. Oh, right. Signal jammers. You right, see, right, right, right. this death is a Okay, where was she? Ship services. Here to upgrade that ship of yours? Anything ship related? You're at the right place. I don't mind helping, but it'll cost you. I bet you would. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Let's take a look. Okay, shipbuilder. Let's see, we want jammers. Weapons, bays, cargo, cockpits, dockers, engines, equipment. Scan jammer, single. Scan jammer, dual frequency. Scan jammer, multiple frequency. Well, I, I need Starship Design Rank 2 for that, so we'll do this one. And put it there. Okay, we've got a scan jammer. 
I hope that's it. Confirm modification. Hey. There we go. We've got shielded cargo. We've got scan jammers. We are officially in the smuggler business. Do a hard save here, just in case we get in trouble for um, taking a detour. Alright, so the lock is there on the surface, but we can grab jump to the soul system really quickly. And Demos. Uh, Phobos. Oh, we saw you grab jump away. Nice jump. Where We're exactly right did you go? Vessel ID acknowledged. Part one clear for docking. Welcome home to the vigilance. Green lights on outer hatch. We're docked. I'm glad they're just making me go for treasure instead of, like, destroy a settlement or something like that. Right, I've got evidence Most of corruption. Most of our operations team graduated top of their class at the academy. But there's fleet out there. We'll find them. Heard you boarded the key. I can't imagine what state the pirates have left it in. I bet operations on the key are a clown show. I'm looking forward to reading your report. Anything new to report? Will I have access to any SysDev resources while I'm undercover? We'll provide you with information, but any inventory or ship services, it's best you get from the fleet. It'll help you maintain your cover and also give you an idea of how the fleet's operation works. What other background information can you give me on the fleet? They're pirates in every sense of the word, but they've managed to get more organized under their current leadership. That makes them especially dangerous. Hopefully, it makes them a little more predictable, too. I have evidence for you. Nice work. Let me take a look. According to this, you have a mole feeding supplies to Jasmine Durand. Yeah, you're right. But there's no way this was a solo job. Shifting all those parts takes serious manpower. I'll send this to Mast so they can shake the tree a bit, see what falls out. Looks like Durand better start looking for parts somewhere else. Any other fragments? Accur says, hey Ox, I just read on a forum that you cannot find the colony ship until new game plus three. What? I've got to start a new game plus two times? Are you kidding? Yikes. All right. Here's everything I have on Shinya Voss. So Voss engineered a way to directly interface with the key's mainframe? I knew he was a math genius, but didn't realize he was so tech-savvy. Well, we'll share this information with Galbank. Hopefully it'll help them shore up the security on their cryptocurrency. Have any more? I've discovered some interesting information about Radley Jasso. So, Mr. Yasso is actually Lionel Soto. We thought Soto was dead. At least... That's what the records told us. I'll have the records updated, but seeing as Mr. Yasso has surrounded himself with the Crimson Fleet, there isn't much we can do. Yet. Anything else? That's it for now. Okay. Fine. Fine. 
I know there's more out there, so keep on it. I mean, I just brought you a ton of stuff. You really don't like talking about the past, do you? You're not gonna let this go, are you? Why do you care so much about my past? I mean, I wouldn't be asking if the game didn't give me these options. Why do you, why do you care so much that I'm asking? Because the things you're asking are private, and we're supposed to be maintaining a professional rapport, not making friends. I mean, she's right. What's wrong with making friends? Look, I like to keep my attachments at a minimum, okay? In my line of work, if you make friends, you eventually end up losing them, either through reassignment or, well, um, for other reasons. All right, so that leaves uh, three options. Since I'm entrusting Sis Death with my life, I deserve to know who's got my back. Call it professional courtesy. I like to know who I'm working with. Or hey, you're the one that implied you had something to tell me. I mean, that's true. You're right, I did. I suppose I'm hesitating because I'm not sure you'll like what I have to say. Would it shock you to learn that I spent some time in prison? <laughs> I suppose that makes me a hypocrite. Why does that make you a hypocrite? Oh, come on. I haven't exactly been cordial about my feelings towards the Crimson Fleet's illegal activities. Shocked is a good way to put it, yes. You're not a hypocrite, but you have a lot of explaining to do. Quite the opposite. It explains quite a lot. Oh, does it now? Was I giving off some kind of ex-con sort of vibe? <laughs> well... Give me a chance to explain. I grew up in the well in New Atlantis. Parents made barely enough money to keep the lights on in our apartment. After I dropped out of school, they begged for me to look for work. But I realized it was a lot easier to simply take whatever I wanted instead. A year after that, I'm a career criminal with UC security breathing down my neck and my parents kicking me out of the house. So you lived in the th in the streets? Hell no. I made enough money to buy my own apartment. Filled it with some decent stuff, too. I'd even send pictures of the place to my folks to rub it in. I was a real asshole. Um, well. <laughs> I wasn't a nice person. From a criminal to a cop, go figure. Or I'm waiting for the bad news, or you did what you had to do. Let's go from a criminal to a cop, go figure. <laughs> Would make a hell of a motion picture. I was having the time of my life, earning way more than I needed to simply get by and loving every minute of it. Back then, if you would have told me one day I'd be wearing this uniform, I'd have said you were out of your mind. And yet, look at you now. Or I bet UC Sistev eventually recruited you for an undercover sting operation, which is exactly what we're going through. But this sounds like a painful memory. Maybe we should stop. Let's try this, see what she says. Hmm, very funny. And not even relatively close. Uh... Let's just say the years after my time in the well were filled with highs and lows. Look, the point is that I felt you deserve to know a bit about my past, to know where my anger towards the fleet comes from. You're just gonna leave it at that? Yeah. I think I've told you more than enough. Besides, my job here is to keep an eye on you, not the other way around. Being a criminal in New Atlantis is a long way from running with the fleet, where you don't have to justify your anger, or thanks for sharing this with me. You're welcome. Well, <laughs> I think you've had enough for now. <laughs> you get the point. Let's get back to it before Keyboy writes us a citation for loitering. So I'm guessing the more evidence that we uncover, the more she opens up about her own history. We'll be here if you need us. Okay, can we say anything to Keyboy? You have your back. You have your orders. Nope. I got mess hall duty next week. Where you gotta take your... I doubt we're going to find anyone in the brig, but we can check real quick just to see if there are any new faces. This is the brig. 
No new face, no new face. Oh, hello. Austin Rake. Yeah, he is there. I guess you think I have some sad story to tell? That I met some sick orphans on New Homestead and grew a conscience? Or maybe you're the cynical type. And you think I turned a new leaf because I wanted Sis to have to go easy on me. The truth is a bit more complicated than that. <clears throat> I don't even remember who you are. <laughs> the truth is always complicated. That's why no one ever wants to hear it. It's not that complicated. You're a traitor. Or then explain it to me. Sure, I got time. You see, at my age, you know who you are. And I've always been a thief. I'd swipe a credit stick for my own mother if it had enough zeros on it. But even in a group of credit-hungry thieves, a man has to have a code. Rules. You mean honor among thieves? Rules are made to be broken, or the fleet has rules. And they're as paper thin as Delgado's skin when you joke about his arm. Even Nev is a traitor to her own ambition, and Shinya to himself. But it means nothing if the higher-ups are loyal, if you can't keep the rooks from sampling your wares. That's the part that ticked me off. In the fleet, you gotta worry about the guy sleeping next to you, and if he's gonna take a bigger piece of the pie. You gotta wake up the next morning and wonder why your slice is missing and the crumbs are stuck to his face. Would you be interested in working for Sizdef? <laughs> I put a bigger target on my back? As far as I'm concerned, the brig is the safest place I can be. The second you drag me into some private room, you're basically telling everyone here that I'm a rat. Neva mentioned you changed your identity. Yeah, I've had some work done. If you got the Crimson Fleet on your back, you would too. As for the name, that was actually the hard part. You can use a hundred different aliases and the system will just add them to the list. Now you can pay a guy to delete the list, but nothing's ever really gone forever. Neva probably paid the same guy to hit rewind. And here we are. Why join a medical supply ship? Well, for one, they don't have much in the way of loot, but they're still important to somebody. You can't just blow up one without it showing up on SSNN, or you see Captain getting a 10-inch stack of slates on his desk. But more importantly, do-gooders are predictable. The pirate code changes depending on who's reciting it. Honest folks, they have a habit of writing their rules down. Why did I join the Regana? Truth is, I just wanted a good night's sleep. That's about it. Well, we missed him last time because his cell is darkened. Let's see if they've picked up anyone else. And I don't think so. I don't think we've given up, uh, given them enough time. Do what Commander Ikande says and you'll go far. Wow, she's just blocking the way. But we can see the cells from here and there's no one else. I can't wait to fill up the, that brig with more familiar faces. Clamps released. Right, this is gonna send us all the way back to the Crick system. And we need to land on the planet itself, Suvarov. Let's set a course. Still in one piece. She gets so excited about good jumps. <laughs> Sarah's so funny. All right, let's scan the planet as I don't believe we've done that yet. Let's show resources. Actually, it looks like we have scanned it. We can land at the lock. Landing initiated. Watch your flaring. I'm gonna do a 
hard save here. And I think I'm all out of time. That puts us at just over five hours and uh, I need to get ready. So thanks everybody for joining me for today's broadcast of Starfield. As I said earlier in the broadcast, I won't be streaming tomorrow as I have an appointment, but I will be back on Wednesday for more Starfield live streams. I'll be using my time on Tuesday to work on a new lore video, a video for Starfield, so I hope to get that done by the weekend. Plus, there'll be plenty more shorts all this week, so stay tuned for more Oxhorn. Thanks again for coming, everybody. Love each and every one of you. Thanks for all of the chat and the interaction, as well as your super chats and super tips. I deeply appreciate it. Have a wonderful rest of your Monday, and I'll see you all again very soon with more lore videos and more live streams. Bye-bye now.